Did you know that going up escalators makes you more generous than going down? There was a series of studies that found that people are more likely to donate to a charity table or offer more of their time to answering questions if they were going up to the next floor rather than heading down. The researchers hypothesized that the upward motion triggers unconscious feelings of altruism and benefits, or sorry, benefit, beneficence that influence our actions. Though scientists have recommended at least 30 minutes of exercise a day, they've found that half of that can still add years to your life. Of course, about one of those years will have been spent exercising in 15-minute chunks, so it's kind of a wash. The first treadmill was designed by a pair of doctors at the University of Washington in 1952. It was created to help diagnose heart and lung issues. In 2009, double dutch jump rope became a varsity sport at New York City public schools. And if you live in a big city and you like to go outside, there's a good chance you're breathing in germs from dog poop. Researchers from the University of Colorado found unexpectedly high levels of bacteria linked with animal feces in each one of the cities they surveyed, including Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, and Mayville, Wisconsin. It was Detroit that had the highest level of airborne dog poop. There you go, just starting off with some interesting facts. How's that? I'm KJ, and this is KJ's What Happened, and I welcome you here. I hope you are doing okay. Hope you're hanging in there. Hope you're uh, prospering. Hope you're happy, uh, joyful intermittently, because anybody who's constantly joyful is suspect to me, but that's just me. But yeah, I hope you're well, man. Thank you for being here. Plenty to get into, man. A world going off the rails. Wars and rumors of wars. Matthew 24 territory for sure. The uh, shadow of tribulation. I mean, um, that wave that's on the money, it's also on St. John's Pillars for New York City, could pop off any time now. Now we're starting to see how everything's starting to line up. Perfectly for some of these prophecies to start playing out. And remember, it was Obama himself, as he was president, he was asked a question about, you know, what are you most concerned about? This is in some press briefing. You can look this up. And he said, what I'm most concerned about is uh, the Russians popping off a nuke off the coast of New York City. Something like that, <laughs> right? He said, you can look into this. Um, so everything's being set up for it, man. You know, everything's being set up for it. I, I hope you're close to the Lord. I hope you got a good relationship with him. And even if you don't have a great relationship or a good relationship, I hope you at least have him. Got to have him now, folks. Most of you already know that. But that's what all this is about. There's no point in arguing the left-right paradigm and just nonsense, getting into the nonsense of it, all the little bits and pieces, because the big picture is we're in the end times. The Bible told us this time was coming. And the only true escape is through Jesus Christ. So... I hope you have him. If you don't, please do. <laughs> ASAP. ASAP. All right, let's get started, man. There's a lot to do here, a lot to get into. Once again, thank you for being here. I saw Tamara's here. Thanks a lot, Tamara, for being here. Always want to thank my Patreon and PayPal supporters and those that subscribe to the scariest movie ever. TV. Guys, thank you all so much. I'm fully funded by the people. It's been this way for years now, especially with all the uh, censorship online. So uh, I pray for you guys, too, and I just thank you so much. You know, really, thank you. Okay, then, let's go. Parents outraged after eighth graders asked to list sex acts they'd be comfortable engaging in. Connecticut School District has apologized after high school students were given an assignment that asked them to detail the kinds of sex acts they prefer to engage in as part of a lesson about consent that was using pizza as a metaphor. Pizza and consent is what it was called. And we know pizza is associated with pedophilia. And that's not me just saying that. It's, it's all from the FBI. It's a code word. It's one of the many. As many code words uh, for the pitas and pizza is one. There you go. Interesting. So it's all just coming out. Now it's in your classroom. You're like, oh, this is all, that's all, uh, you know, it's all Q stuff. It's all a uh, conspiracy. They were saying. James Elephantis, remember that? Then they had the false flag. They had some guy walking there with a gun or something. And that lot of censorship started over that one, too. Remember? A lot of censorship started over that one. But he ran, he's a creep that runs a pizza place that was filled with uh, pedo imagery 
all over the walls and had a uh, underground tunnels. It was real close to uh, D.C. It was in D.C., so close to the White House and all that. And we know this underground tunnels there. So you just start putting all the pieces together and uh, you get you get the bigger picture of it. What's, uh, what's happening here? Look up the Franklin scandal also if you want to see the White House tied to uh, child sex rings. The Franklin scandal. Don't hear about that on the news. A message to Australian Prime Minister bully boy Scott Morrison. But interesting comments from Mr. Scott Morrison when he says regarding Russia that Australia always stands up to bullies. Australia always stands up to bullies, do we, Mr. Scott Morrison? Well, might I remind you what has just happened in this country over the last two years as you opened the door and rolled out the red carpet for a host of bullies to come in here and screw this country over and screw over regular Australian families and individuals. You rolled out the carpet for the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, the United Nations, and Big Pharma to lead Australia into medical apartheid. And it's been fucking catastrophic. They have bullied, coerced, manipulated Australia into two or three doses of this unsafe, untested, unjustifiable, fucking catastrophic injection on your watch. So don't come out and tell us that you stand up to bullies. You have opened the door and rolled out the red carpet for a whole host of international bullies that have trodden down Australia for the last two years, causing an unknown number of catastrophic adverse reactions and deaths from these fucking injections. Untold numbers of dead elderly alone in aged care, malnourished, dehydrated, dying alone of despair and neglect. So don't say you stand up to bullies as our teens and youth suicide at rates never before seen because of this bullying. Do not say you stand up to bullies because you don't. You have opened the fucking door and let them all in on your watch. And you have let the premiers run rogue. Michael Gutter, Mark McGowan, Anastasia Palaszczuk, Gladys Berejiklian, Daniel Andrews, all systematically destroying and bullying the Australian people, destroying families, bullying them into an injection just so they can feed their kids and pay their mortgage and go to work. And now it's all coming back to bite everyone as the adverse reactions and injury toll mounts up because of the bullying and the media bullying, coercing, gaslighting, manipulating, and lying to the Australian people. That we get it. All right. He's definitely angry. Um, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. Here's Chris Sky. Oh. Trudeau is forced to drop the Emergency Act. You guys hear about that? The Emergency Act has been dropped. Uh, still going to keep an eye on things, though, because there's more things happening in the works. So I'll show you that today. There's a lot to show you, actually, that I think is important. Some really important ones today, especially about what's happening in Ukraine. So a lot of footage coming out. Right before the Senate is set to vote on the Emergency Act, which we were hoping wouldn't pass, Trudeau just pulled a 180, backpedaled, and said, it's no longer needed. So he went through all that trouble just to back out at the last second? Or is it because he knew he wasn't going to get it past the Senate and it would have made him look even more like the pathetic, weak, loser, non-leader, hiding little bitch that he is? <laughs> what do you think? Do you think he just gave up because he had a change of heart? Or do you think he gave up because... His daddy, Klaus Schwab, told him it was probably best for the agenda. Yeah, that, it is his daddy. I'll show you some Klaus Schwab stuff today, too. Live update from Ukraine. Traffic jams, no fuel, panic on the streets. This is from the 24th, so two days ago. It's a young lady who's living in Ukraine. So um, everybody who is asking what's going on in Ukraine, yes. Russia start at 4 a.m. bombing 
all territory of Ukraine, all avia bases, military bases, all kind of other stuff, storages with military stuff. So, for example, now in Kiev, it was a couple of rocket attacks and Kiev and for sure so many people live in city. There is a big traffic jams on the exit. Uh, the public transportation is going for free and many people hiding in metro stations because in Kiev, metro stations are very deep in the ground. Some is 50 meters down. We have even 100 meter under the ground so it's actually in soviet union they was building it like bomb shelters and i guess now it's really the great use for people uh, to hide there and somehow to feel safe now i'm in the west ukraine i also actually noticed that i really didn't put fuel in my car so now we will drive exactly to gas station i will go to atm to withdraw cash in case that if anything will not work really this is crazy even to think about like that and also I will go to supermarket to check how the things and we'll be showing you everything. So actually this is my fuel tank, almost empty. I don't know how I was really so much stupid to not actually think about it. So the fuel is finishing, 95 is disappearing for the people who really needed 95. And this is all the things and the line is way bigger. Just showing some of the traffic, but in a second she's going to come back on. I'll jump ahead some. This is uh, five minutes. And yeah, there is a huge line of the people who is waiting for ATM. Uh, and uh, I actually by myself don't have a lot of cash, but I see the card is still working, so I don't want to wait on the line. I hope that this is the most peak, and a little bit later it will go down, and I would be able to somehow to take. In the shops, you cannot really say that it's some kind of panic, but um, there is people on the cashier. It's a little bit more dense than usually. Let us see how the things will be. Okay, the food is still there. This is the milk, for example, all kind of products. I see sausages and all that stuff. Uh, for now, uh, doesn't look like people really buy everything. So it is all available. So, as you see, even the shelves a bit empty, that they are filling the shelves with other things. I came to buy baby food. I have a baby, so I guess this one is good to buy. Okay, I would not really refer to this shop because I'm not sure how much uh, food they used to have. Anyway, I see that, yes, there is a short shortage of the kind of cereals. People always eat a lot of porridges, uh, so... Uh, they really take a lot out but the good point that always and they take in flour a lot and they keep bringing flour they keep bringing salt and everything so it seems that see they bring more stuff so people are buying but it doesn't mean that their shop doesn't have anything in storage they have and they keep bringing for now at least so my survival uh, purchases I take a couple of floors, I take a couple of oils. The news in the one city, which is somehow in the middle of Ukraine, one uh, rocket fall just in the middle of the city, one civilian died, five civilians injured, and all that I don't know how by any means can be justified as uh, protecting Russian speakers. And you know the funny thing that uh, I just opened Russian news to check what they're writing about that, and they said, it is all as per constitution and as per international law. We are not breaking anything and this is all 100% legal. So that was all for now. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button. So once I will update new video, you will have notification. I will try to give you only the most available and information about what's happening in Ukraine. Love you all. Bye. All right. I'd like to find a uh, an update on that sometime. Column of destroyed and abandoned tanks in Ukraine. So a lot of footage is starting to come out. This is short. <laughs> Imagine, you know, what you're going to see today, this footage coming out. And have you seen any of this on your mainstream news?
All right, as I said, that one's kind of short, but I've got a lot of them, or several. Here's another one. A town, the town of Oak Trika, I'm guessing, in Ukraine. Lots of destruction there. Still smoldering. All right, moving on. Melit Melitopol Air Base Tactical Nuke says, so this is also in Ukraine. Allegedly, there's 10 thumbs down. Yeah, maybe it's not a tactical nuke, but it's a bomb. So that might just be kind of mislabeled there. Maybe for clicks, you know. There's that. There's also, um, this happens all the time. Anytime something major is going on. But there's a lot of stuff coming out. I've, I've seen it especially in comments, people won't make any videos about it. They'll leave comments that none of this is real. It's all fake. It's all CGI. There's no bombs going off. There's no, there's no war. Everything's okay. It's just all an illusion. No, no, it's, it's happening. Teacher resigns video. Texas middle school teacher says those conservative Christians need to get COVID and die. I guess she resigned after she after this went viral. Let's see if we can hear it. I'm going to see my boyfriend. Oh, yeah, I mean, you could hear it. Not, not super clear, but you could hear it. But anyway, I mean, no surprise. This is teaching your kids. You know, this is teaching you. I could have made that video like two hours long with all the stuff I find. But, you know, that gets a little much. But I could have thrown in a bunch of these clips, too. I tried to steer clear of a lot of the the uh, school board meeting stuff because that, that itself, I mean, just hours and hours and hours of footage of school board tussles. Uh, Klaus Schwab, you're going to want to hear this straight from the horse's mouth or straight from the horse's ass. Klaus Schwab, Putin, is uh, one of his young global leaders. And I have to say, um, when I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin, and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on. So loves all these little tyrants. Cabinets. So yesterday I was at a reception. And listen to that too. He just said he's, you know, the, the WEC has infiltrated the cabinets. I mean, they're in these groups. Uh, they've, they've got a lot of these politicians in their pockets. You're watching the beast system at work. Rain, reigning in, bringing in the Antichrist. As of uh, Argentina and so on that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau, and I would know that half of this cabinet, or even more half of, uh, half of this cabinet, are for our actually young global leaders of the world. Right. And yeah. that's true in Argentina, too. Well, wow. yes. sorry. Easy with the microphones, huh? All right, so there you have it, folks. 
you know, there's a lot of Putin praise and some of these comments and people cheering on Russia and things like this. I've seen that stuff also, man. It's remember the whole, whole world's a stage. And, and ultimately what all this is that's happening and playing out, these guys aren't vying for political power and all this other stuff. You know, it's all a game, right? No, it's, it's more than that. It really is going to usher in uh, the Antichrist, the, the one world order, one world religion, all of it. That's what all of this is. All these pieces moving. That's what's happening. The beginning of so remember, we, we're not fighting flesh and blood. I'm not f fighting Klaus Schwab. I'd like to. I'm not fighting uh, Fauci. I'd love to. Give me five minutes alone or norm with Bill Gates, right? <laughs> but uh, but we're not fighting these people, man. We're fighting spirits and principalities, in high places. Ukrainian foreign minister, the end of the world as we know it. Large scale war in Ukraine will be the end of the world order as we know it. If Russia does not get a severe, swift, and decisive response now, this will mean a total bankruptcy of the international security system and international institutions which are tasked with maintaining the global security order. This is a grim scenario which will throw us back to the darkest times of the 20th century. Russia will not stop at Ukraine. If a permanent member of the UN Security Council succeeds in breaking literally all rules, other actors will be inspired by him and follow his pattern. We are currently at the middle of the largest security crisis in Europe since the Second World War. This crisis was created and is being escalated by one side unilaterally, by the Russian Federation. Russia's accusations of Ukraine are absurd. Ukraine has never threatened or attacked anyone. Ukraine has never planned and does not plan any such action. Ukraine has never planned and does not plan any military offensive in the Donbas. Neither any provocations or acts of sabotage. It is ultimately absurd to suggest that Ukraine could have prepared for anything like this and waited for months until Russia amassed an enormous military force along our borders to proceed with such alleged plans. This absurdity defies basic logic. All righty. There's that, my friends. Okay. So this, this right here is super interesting. We saw the story, I mean, it's only been maybe three weeks ago, a month ago, about uh, Biden's administration putting in $30 million to send good crack pipes out to uh, all the, the communities where that kind of thing is prevalent, we'll say. Uh, well, uh, now a uh, 60 million, this guy's saying, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's 60 million. I don't know. Anyway, uh, now you're going to get a look at what our government's doing <laughs> because see, they don't want you off these drugs. They want you on them. They, right? they want you not in your right mind, obviously. And you're going to see that right here. That's every crack. Tuesday That's and crack. Friday in yeah. Hollywood. Um, they so That's every crack. Tuesday That's and Friday crack. in Hollywood, um, they have That's a Catholic church that crack. gives this stuff out. Um, this is what we live in at, y'all. And this is what the government's doing. Uh, Joe Biden said he spent $60 million on paraphernalia for drugs. And this is what it looks like. It says being alive. This is a meth pipe Yep, right here with this bubble thing. I guess you put the meth in there. Mm -hmm. This is a crack pipe. Yep. Okay. These are all instructions on how to overdose treatment and education. These are, this is the needle in here. I'm not going to open this. I'm scared. That's I'm, for heroin. Yes, for heroin. It has the alcohol That's pass. That's a real needle? It's yeah. a needle in there. Oh my God. And um, these things are like a, a black and mild filter that you put on the crack pipe so you don't get no one's saliva, so you don't get sick, and you can do your drugs. And, so this is so they like it. It. So they like, if you're going to do drugs, we're going to give right. it to you so that you can do it the proper way without getting sick. Because we're, we're not, we're not stopping it. We're not, we're not going to stop it. Exactly. This is letting you know that it's going to be here. This is what they do. This is Satan taking over the system, folks. Satan taking over the system. Joe Rogan on Biden. Short clip. That was one of the things that people were saying that I was a Trump supporter during the election because I said mm -hmm. I would vote for Trump before I'd vote for Biden. Mm -hmm. But I didn't vote for either. Mm -hmm. I, I, the reason why I said that is like, I was like, you don't see this. Mm -hmm. Like you guys out of your fucking mind. You don't see that this guy can't, he's can't talk right anymore. Yeah. Go watch videos of him from 20 years ago. He was a, 
he is a dummy. He said a lot of silly shit. He lied about a bunch of things, mm -hmm. but at least he was articulate. He at least he could like, if you see the Clarence Thomas hearing mm -hmm. where he's talking to Clarence yeah, yeah. Thomas about natural law. And then Clarence Thomas later is talking about, it. he's like, I did not know what the fuck he was talking about, <laughs> but he's having this thing, you know, and I know what we're talking about mm -hmm. here. Other people might not know, but you know, and I know what we're talking about. Clarence Thomas is like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking <laughs> about, but I'm just going to let you. That was Biden his whole life. Mm -hmm. I mean, o Obama like famously said during the election, he ho hopes Joe doesn't fuck this up because that's what he did. Like he yeah, would he lie could, about his experience. Know. He would lie about his background and education. He would lie yes, about his he, record. I mean, he, he he would lie about all kinds of things. Yes. He, he lied about graduating in the top of his class. Yes. He lied about having more than one degree. Dude, we he used lied to about do um, marching Joe... with Mandela. Oh, yeah. He lied South about America. his arrests recently. He lied about being arrested the first time imagine, I was arrested. You know, when, do people, when do people lie? I mean, it's it's so hard for me to put myself in the position of people that would lie like this. You know, the other one I, I think of a lot is Joy Reid at MSNBC when yeah. she wrote those homophobic things on her blog and in 2008. And she said she got hacked. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I can't. I, I understand white lies. I understand certain lies. But there's there's some lies where I, I, I struggle to understand what it would feel like to be the person thinking it's a good idea. I think there's people that don't value truth. Mm. They don't value <clears throat> honesty. I think they just want to win. They just want to get past this problem that they're having and they want to have a solution. What's the best solution? Well, you could say you got hacked. Let's say I got hacked. Let's go with that. And the Biden thing is just, I think he just always wanted people to think highly of himself. Mm -hmm. We used to do this thing at Stitches Comedy Club in Boston in the 1980s, in 1988, in fact. And we called it Joe Biden Night because Biden got busted plagiarizing other politicians' speeches. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember that. Mm -mm. Yeah, Biden ran for president in 88 and his campaign got derailed because he was quoting, I think it was Bobby Kennedy verbatim, verbatim. And then there was someone else. I think it was an English politician and quoting these people verbatim, like just like, stealing their speeches. Uh -huh. And I think he blamed it on one of his speechwriters did it or wh right. whatever. But it was such a scandal that we had created Joe Biden night at stitches comedy club so like i would go up and i would do your act mm. like we would work together every day mm -hmm. i would know your act like i would go up and do your act and you would do my act that's hilarious and people would pick a person and they would go up and do their act and for us it was a howl because like you would see like kevin knox going up there doing steve sweeney's act mm -hmm. and it was a thing like that's how much he was known of as a goof then wow <laughs> yeah people forget so so quickly don't they some people do Biden a liar and the racist. This is from our friend Brian Murray. Truth, a voice in the desert. Elon Musk and his wife's strange stone. read that for you is earlier this week she wiped this is uh talking about grimes this is uh, elon musk's i think ex-wife now i think they already got divorced earlier this week she wiped her instagram account began posting teasers for a new song with messages like a new way to die and there were humans and gods and nothing but angels in between And then I want to show this. So this is something that was on their, the Instagram, I guess, associated with Grimes and, and Elon Musk. But it's interesting to see some of this imagery here. What was I looking at? There it is. Um, right down there, man, you can see about center screen and just a little lower. It's the second line up from the bottom. You can see there's a uh, symbol for a virus plus a bunch of the, you know, the pokety poke equals spaceship and that's really right in line with the kind of things we've been following forever we know that the 
the alien agenda is coming, right? Fake alien agenda, but it's it's coming. And I don't think it's all going to be blue beam. I think it'll be a mix of things. It could be a little blue beam, but they'll also be actual beings. And these will be, uh, I think, a cast of characters, uh, fallen angels, demons, Elohim, the little gods from the Bible. And they're going to tell the world that they created us, and they're going to show us how they did it. And um, that'll be the great delusion, man. You know, a lot of people are going to fall for it. That'll be uh, all these churches are going to break. That's why it's most important to have your real relationship with the Lord, right, with the Lord God through Jesus Christ. Make sure you have it, man. Great delusion is coming. And this is just one bit of it uh, that's on the way. Great delusions. Mm. Looks like lunar cycles, serpents, dragons. There's the radiation symbol at the bottom with another little face next to it or something, an atomic sign next to it, end. So, yeah, interesting. And then there's that, right? There's the virus, the... And then the UFOs. There you go. All right. Thank you, Brian, for bringing that to our attention. Okay, so the... Bottled water pH level test... It's seven minutes long. I don't know if I want to do the whole thing, but she tests all these waters. We'll play some. The point of this video today is we've bought a bunch of bottled waters, <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and try them out today um, to figure out what their pH level actually um, actually is in each of these bottles. Some of them are advertised as having a higher pH than normal, as you can see on Essentia right there with the 9.5, um, and others are just normal everyday bought waters. The one from... Starbucks is in there, Trader Joe's brand, Zephyr Hills, great, let's see. It's around a... Neutral, that's about neutral right there. Oh, that matches the green right there. So Icelandic claims to be over an eight, but right now it's measuring seven. Um, Trader Joe's electrolyte plus water, that's definitely, what number is that color? What number is that's that one? It's an eight. It's an eight, maybe an eight and a half on that one. So that's really good for Trader Joe's because they advertise 9.5. So that's the color we're shooting for right there. All right, let's try Essentia. That's darker. Yep, that's even darker than the Trader Joe's one. So that's a great color. Okay, let's go to Voss. Oh, oh, oh not good. It's around a... Not good. Five and a six. Where is it at? It's around a five, five and a six. That's not even six. That's a five. So that's a definitely an acidic water. It's a very expensive water, too. So I would not be drinking that one. Interesting. All right, let's go to you, um, Eternal. Eternal? Oops. Mm, okay. Green. That's Looking, comparing that to the other ones, that's a little bit darker than Icelandic, but that's well, it's starting to turn blue. Yeah. So that's definitely so, yeah. alkaline. Yeah. All right, I'll stop there. But if you want to see all of them get tested, it's on Stephanie Lee channel, bottled water pH level test, and they got pretty much all the all the big names up there. Oh, look at that. Maybe there's a lineup at the end here. Looks like there is. So here's a lineup of them. Fiji didn't do perfect looks like they did a little they did okay and then look at all these yellows over here in front of the Dasani Aquafina store-bought stuff also there's more there you go folks I thought that was interesting <clears throat> suddenly died oh yeah this one uh, for whatever reason uh, I've noticed it's it's on Bing search engine and i mentioned this before in some of the past shows that there's every time i've gone on a bing search engine um and I, I go on different search engines with different search terms just to see what comes up it's just a way i do stuff to kind of find information and i'll go through a few different you know because my main one is DuckDuckGo, but i try the other ones just to kind of see what comes up anyway suddenly died on Microsoft Bing. Um, 
Every time I bring up the main page, though, for Microsoft Bing, there's there's deaths. And it's this has been this way for a couple months. Always young people. A lot of them are athletes. A lot of them are like C or D list celebrities are dying, you know, and they're 30, you know, suddenly died. Uh, some heart attack stuff like never associating it with the, you know, but anyway, died suddenly trends on Google search as MSM tries to jump ahead of it. They all died suddenly this past week. Let's see if I can just refresh this. There's more. But that's something you might want to try and you'll you'll see a lot of mysterious deaths. You put up suddenly died in uh, in these different search engines. And here's uh, with soccer season poised to begin a Washington coach dies suddenly of a heart attack. New York City firefighter 33 who died suddenly after battling Blaze. NHS hero dies suddenly months before wedding as tributes paid to COVID vaccinator. Um, yeah, anyway, just something you can do if you want to find some of this. Let's do a little search. Australia, 91% of COVID deaths had, had other health issues on death, death certificates. And this is just, we we know this. We've seen plenty of clips on this on this shows, but but it's still good to continue seeing it, right? Over 2,600 people have died from COVID in Australia, thanks to uh, thanks during this pandemic, but almost all of them, 91% had one or more other health issues wow. listed alongside their death certificate. Now, uh, the conditions that were most, uh, most prevalent, chronic cardiac conditions, 35% of people who died from COVID had a chronic heart condition, dementia, 31%, diabetes, 20%, chronic respiratory issues, 16%, hypertension, 14%, cancer, 14%, kidneys, disease, 14%. So we know that vulnerable people who've already got health issues are more prone to dying from COVID. And these statistics do show exa that is exactly the case. If you're a fit, healthy person, you are very unlikely to die from COVID. And now just... A <laughs> yep. Um, and we know the hospitals get paid, you know, by COVID deaths and uh, how many people are on vents and things like this. So it's sick. It's a, it's a very, very sick system that's right in front of people's face, right? But so many people don't see it. Vehicles honk as they pass protesters outside the Canadian consulate in New York City. About it. <laughs> How we can if you fell off your bicycle and broke your arm, it would be counted as a clovid. In the last uh, week or so, is having a look, uh, and we've had an expert clinical panel review how we capture COVID admissions to hospital. What we realised here in New South Wales that we, we had a very conservative approach to that capture, and we were back capturing people coming into hospital. Uh, who, and I think I touched on this a couple of weeks ago, so incidental COVID, uh, back capturing all the way back 28 days prior to admission. And what that meant was that in our numbers, we were getting a skewing of our data. So, for example, if you were 22 years of age, uh, you had COVID three weeks ago, uh, you'd recovered from that, fell off your bicycle, broke your arm and came to hospital, we would count you as a COVID admission. Uh, after the review <laughs> by our expert clinical panel, we've now reduced that back capture to 14 days to provide uh, a more realistic picture of what we're seeing in our hospitals. Yep, it's about time, toots. Slow Joe chases an ice cream truck. So, Principal Richardson, you know, thank you for welcoming us here today and Secretary Cardona and uh, Mayor Bowser and Chancellor Farabee, you know, thank you for joining us as well. And for families across the country, you know, the school year, gosh, it always brings this sort of mix of emotions for all of us. You know, all at once, we feel the anticipation of new classmates and teachers you know, the relief of not having to hear, uh, I'm bored. I'm bored listening to you. It's hard to listen to her. Get out! Unhinged store owner yells at maskless woman with children. Get out! Get out! Get out! It's my time to store! Get out! Get Triple out! Get out! I don't believe! Get out! It's a private store! Get out! It's not the public space! Get out! It's the owner! Get out! Get up! 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 
front of his kids. Get up! Get up! Get up! I'm asking you, I see. Get out of my store! 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 I don't care if I just get out of the store! Get out of the store, please! For one is my food. Get out of the store! I have to watch the menu! I cannot wear it. I'm getting it. Because it causes me anxiety. Let's say, go shop anywhere else. It's a private store. I'm getting whatever I want. Get up! Okay. Good for you. Wow. Get up! What a creep. What a creep. But again, we see it all the time. It's, you know, there's people in our world have been really beaten down by the system. And now the system is providing them with some form of power in their minds. And we see it all the time. We see it all the time. Loving that power, this perceived power they have over others. Loving it. Loving it. From Memology 101. Well, well, what do we have here? <laughs> just a that was a short one from them i hadn't even watched the whole thing but all right we get it so it's just another uh, example of the inversion we know we know so, inside uh, report from like camp freedom yet. wellington new zealand a short one at camp freedom in wellington and i just really want to share with you some of the horrors i've witnessed um People, myself included, have been subject to intimidation by ways of smiling, um, hugs, uh, asking how we're doing. Um, I keep getting offered food and coffee. I've had people giving me extra feeding and, and offering to look out for me because I'm here on my own. I mean, I've witnessed so many poor children encouraged to play and enjoy their childhood getting out in the open air. Um, yesterday, they had a dance party and an instrument party. And then afterwards, there was a bouncy castle and candy floss. Honestly, the sound of their laughter is just heartbreaking. Strangers are just hugging each other. They're being asked how they are. I've witnessed people so full of self-entitlement that they just go around picking up rubbish. The camp is actually cleaner than the streets of Wellington, and I think that's disgusting. Jacinda, if you see this, you need to shut this down, because pretty soon people are going to get the idea that we all deserve to be treated as equals. Honestly, I I don't know if I can take much more of this. I really miss the comfort of being left out of society, of uh, being looked down by the elites. I. All right, we get it. Clearly, she's being sarcastic there. So, all right, got it. Joker talks leaving Christianity to become a pansexual Satanist. I read that you split up with your children's mother, right? Yes, that is correct. And uh, this happened last year. Is it yeah. true that you admit out loud to being a something called pansexual? Yes. What's a pansexual? I didn't know what that meant. Okay, so do you know what bisexual means? Yeah. It means you're attracted to like men and women. Right. So, so to me, pansexual means I'm attracted to cis women, cis men, but also trans women and trans men. So I cover everyone on the board. So what's a sissy woman and a sissy man? What does that mean? No, not sissy. What? Cis, like cis <laughs> gender. It means, it means you identify as the gender that you were assigned at birth. So you and I are cis men, cis gender. When we came out, the doctor said, you're a man. And now we're all grown. Okay, we're men. So... So you date are it, cisgender. 
That's amazing. What a messed up life, huh? So do you, um, do you, is it true that you would date a transgender? Yes. Have you always been this way? No, I have not. Um, because I read at one time you were a Christian, right? Yes, for 27 years. And, and, and what made you decide you didn't want to be a Christian anymore? Um, it just occurred to me that hell isn't real. And I was like, well, if there's no hell, then there's really no punishment for not being a Christian. So it allowed me to explore other things. And I just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like eh, I'm an atheist. That's amazing. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes. It is. Sad, and so you don't. So you were only a Christian because you thought that was a. Remember all the creepy clown stories and Joker, and that's all a bit of programming. And I've talked about it, done videos throughout the years on this stuff, but. It's also a spirit, right? It's a, an outward manifestation of what's happening on the inside. So that spirit has taken over. He's got one of them on him or more. The hell? Also, he, he's probably a part of one of these like religious type church type groups, which will turn you off many times and dogma and rules and a bunch of nonsense. And instead of just focusing on having his own relationship with the Lord through Jesus, not feeling like he has to go to a building and be around other people and have to believe like everybody else, but just have your own relationship with the Lord. You can read the Bible yourself. You can pray. You can talk to him all day long. It's beautiful, man. That's what it is. And then he shows himself, you know, over the years, more and more, he'll just reveals himself to you. You know, you really realize you're in a relationship with the Lord. And some of y'all know what I mean. You know, it's through the, the way he communicates with you in different ways. Maybe it's numbers. Maybe it's, synchronicities, right? Things like this. And you know it when it's happening. When you have that, that's not easy to walk away from, but it is easy to walk away from a religion after 27 years. I could understand that. So, you know, you pray for people like this, this guy. Oh, I mean, I was raised Christian, so I grew up, you know, believing, but as I got older, I started seeing how problematic Christianity was in the Christian community and American churches. And then I started distancing myself from that. It was a slow and gradual process that I was like starting to get fed up with that, that way of thinking. But, but the tip of the iceberg, or I mean, the straw that broke the camel's back was realizing that hell, as we like to think of it, or as we're taught about it, is not really what hell would even be if it existed. Who told so you like, that you there was, I'm done with who told you uh, that there was no hell? Um, I think the, the most damning piece of evidence, uh, is that Jews 2000 years ago believed in something called annihilationism. And it was the idea that when you die, if you don't go to heaven, your soul is destroyed and you just no longer exist. And Jesus was a Jew 2000 years ago. <laughs> so he himself would have believed that when you die, you no longer exist. Scrambled brains. And so who convinced you that that was no hell? Um, myself in re, you know, re looking through scripture, looking at analysis of scripture, the original translations, things like that. Are you 100% sure there's no hell? Yes, and so that's why you became a satanic, you joined a satanic religion or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a satanist, I joined the satanic temple. Wow, and so you feel better in the temple of Satan rather than the temple of God. Yes, I do. And what do you get from that that causes you to feel better? Um, the Satanic Temple is obviously not near as judgmental as Christian churches. But one thing that really made me gravitate towards them was with the abortion ban in Texas last year. Um, the Satanic Temple decided that abortion was going to be a Satanic ritual. So if you're a Satanist and you're a member of their temple, you can get a constitutionally protected satanic ritual abortion because it's freedom of religion. So is Satan your God? 
No, I don't technically believe that Satan exists. Most so Satanists why would they don't. call it Satanic religion if they don't believe Satan exists? Because they're just atheists that like to piss off Christians. That's that's really what it usually boils down to. Oh, they get a pleasure from upsetting the Christians? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Amazing. So I read that, and if you want to admit to this, you can. I understand it's private stuff. You don't have to. But okay. in your personal life, you went through a lot. Yeah. Because you did a TikTok that says it listed all the things or some of the things that happened to you in your life. Oh, y'all did a deep dive. Shit. <laughs> uh, and I just want to know, is this true or not? Your mother died of cancer? Yeah, when I was seven. And you were injured in a car accident that killed your grandmother? Also when I was seven, yeah. And your father remarried an abusive woman. Correct. And was she abusive to you or to your father? Both. Both? How was she? Yep. Give me an example of how she was abusive to you. Um, she, just things that she said to me oh. were awful. And, and the way the discipline was set up. She was allowed to discipline me and her son, but my dad was not allowed to discipline her son, only me. So I got disciplined from her and my dad. And so we... Go, go ahead. ahead. And no, so that, you, that, was, that was the end of that thought. And so when she would do that to you, you would tell your father how she would treat you, what would he say or do? I didn't really tell him at the time. Why not? Because I didn't think that it one I didn't think it would do any good and I didn't know if it would no that's that's the main reason I didn't know if it would do any good I mean they're married I didn't want to pit husband and wife against each other but you know afterwards I, I started sharing some of the stuff that she said and did and he was like okay that was you know out of line so how old were you at the time when he was treating you that way uh they got together around the time I was like eight or nine, and they separated when I was about 15 or 16. So what type of impact did it have on you? Your mother died at such a young, you, you were seven or so, and being in a car with your grandmother, she got killed. What type of impact did that have on you personally? Um, It's hard to say, but, you know, I lost a lot of, like, you know, important um like mother figures and womanly roles in my life at a young age. And then the one that I did get, you know, shortly thereafter wasn't a great one. So it, it sort of instilled like, I hate to say it, but almost like a mistrust of women or, or not only that, but not necessarily knowing how to interact with women, if that makes sense. That was something it I had to make teach sense. myself. Yeah. That was something I had to teach myself and 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 learn, you know. And so. so you also had several abusive girlfriends. Is that true? Yep, that's true too. And how were they abusive to you? What would they do to you? They would hit me. They would threaten me. Um, I let one drive my truck while I was in the passenger seat. And she got mad over something small. Don't even remember. But she almost wrecked my truck going 70 on the interstate. <laughs> you know, she would hit me. She'd say, if you don't buy me this, I'm going to break up with you. I'm going to cheat on you. I'm going to do all this. She, one, one of them was the worst ever. And then the rest were similar. You know, one I dated, she had a kid before I, I dated her. And I was like, I'll, you know, take care of your daughter. Like she was my own and raise her and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, after we broke up, she, she was playing mind games using because she knew that I cared about her daughter and she was using her daughter as like a, as like a, like a chess piece or a scapegoat to mess with me, you know? What, so, what was wrong with you that you were allowed in women to treat you that way? Like I said, it was me not having a good mother figure. You know, a mother would have been like, Oh no, she's not, mm -hmm. she's not the one you need to leave her. You need to break up with her, you know, whatever. My dad was just like, Hey, whatever, you know, it's your life, do what you want to do, you know, which I, I don't fault him for. That's not, you know, but I mean, I didn't, I wasn't raised seeing how a woman was supposed to treat a man 
are, you know, seeing a happy relationship and things like that. So I thought that that was normal. And so would you let a woman treat you that way today? No, which is one of the main reasons I'm staying single. <laughs> you also diagnosed, diagnosed as untreated mental illness. Is that true? Yeah, I've been diagnosed with bipolar and OCD. You still Are you still with that condition? Yeah, that never goes away. What is that like to be in that condition for you? Um, the bipolar, um, um, there's different kinds of bipolar and bipolar is usually like swinging from mania, just being, you know, over the top, energetic and all these things. Um, and then there's, you know, you swing down to depression, which is being at your lowest point and all that. But the type that I have is where I have mania symptoms and depression symptoms at the same time, just all the time. What a mess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and stop there. You can watch the whole thing on the Fallen State TV over on BitChute. Joker talks leaving Christianity. Oh, this right here was... Someone shared this with me, and it's a couple near-death experiences, but um, it's it's like an hour and a half long, so and I don't remember exactly where to stop, how to listen to them, but if you're interested in hearing some, it's over on Peggy Robinson, NDE TV. It presents Natalie and Ken. I think it was Ken that sent it to me, so thanks, Ken. Both had botulism or an ICU on a vent, and both had a near-death experience, so check that out. This is the start of a false food shortage. This says. Systems pre-summit last week in Rome. United Nations food systems pre-summit last week in Rome recommended a dietary limit of 14 grams of red meat per person per day. That's one bite. As a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia, I'm appalled. And I'll explain how this is an attack on our farmers and on every Australian. The pre-summit recommended the introduction of a worldwide environmental tax on meat of $1.60 per kilo for cattle grazing on pasture, yet not for cattle raised in intensive feedlots. That distinction reflects the influence of large multinational feedlot operators and the lack of influence that family, family farms have in the UN's eyes. As my colleague, Bob Catter, rightly pointed out, this UN measure will take 2.4 billion kilos of protein off the market, starving 80 million people of protein. Yes, go the UN. The third recommendation of the food systems pre-summit is to move food production within reach of population centers and produce whatever protein and nutrition is possible in that region. It's called short chain food supply. We did that 200 years ago. People starved, nutrition was poor, life expectancy was less than half what we enjoy today. Then along came long chain food supply, allowing countries like Australia to grow crops to feed and clothe those in need. World hunger fell to less than 10%. The only reason there are still areas of poverty and hunger in 2021 is because of war and civil unrest. You know, the things that the United Nations were supposed to solve. World peace has eluded the UN, yet cows have not. The United Nations is proposing to eliminate global food chains that have brought good food to the world for hundreds of years. I've recently spoken about the false water shortage brought to you. Thank the UN's directive to not build new dams. This is the start of a false food shortage. The motivation is to eliminate broadacre agriculture, eliminate food exports and return all that land to nature. Rural voters will be annoyed to hear that the Morrison government bankrolled this attack on our farming community with a $64 million donation. The Liberal national government is funding our own demise the betrayal and demise of our farmers of our country. Australian farms employ 326,000 people directly. They contribute $75 billion to the economy and $60 billion to our exports. Without the push, we'd be stuffed, broke and hungry. These three United Nations proposals will destroy rural Australia, wipe out family farms, crash real estate prices and further hollow out country towns for no benefit to us. There's no better source of protein than red meat. Yet our supermarkets now stock, stock protein and fake food products made from crickets. 
Why? Because billionaires can't make enough profit out of cattle. It's a variable industry with good times and bad. Billionaires can, though, make money on intensive cultivation of bugs for protein. This breaks the reliance on nature's weather and allows scheduled production of a food-like substance with great profit margins and low fulfillment costs. This satisfies the UN dictate for short chain supply. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization is literally directing the replacement of red meat with bug protein. Skeptics can even attend one of the regular UN bug tastings where journalists are encouraged to extol the virtues of bug cuisine. The CSIRO has fallen in line behind the UN, publishing a 64-page love letter on the delights of eating bugs entitled Edible Insects, a Roadmap. Looking through the glossy pages, we see the CSIRO advocates our future should include insect milkshakes, bug ice cream and granola bars made from dried cockroaches. I'm not making any of this up. It's real. This is happening and we taxpayers are paying for it thanks to the Morrison-Joyce government. For those who think they're eating an environmentally friendly product, think again. A fake hamburger patty using plant or bug protein contains 20 chemicals found in pet food. That's all the UN and their quizlings in our federal government think the public deserve, pet food. Yep. How does it make sense to grow good food and instead of eating that food, we feed it to crickets and then we eat the crickets? Fellow Australians, uh -huh. this, there is no protein shortage. There will be, though, if the UN succeeds in wiping out red meat production so they can hand the protein industry over to their big business corporate partners. One Nation rejects this attack on our farming community. We reject state and federal parliaments around our country continuing to demonise and isolate farmers. We will continue to oppose the UN dictating to federal and state governments. One Nation will continue to oppose ideology over humanity. We will continue to stand up for a fair society based on a citizen's right to exercise free choice about diet, health and business. We have one flag, we are one community, we are one sovereign nation. It's time to withdraw from the United Nations. Yes, cheers, applause. That's one of the hot clips right there. This is the start of a false food shortage. Now you're seeing how it's connected with the United Nations. Now more and more we're beginning to understand why little Billy Gates has funded uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars into the uh, fake meat industry. Right, so it's all starting to come together. I was driving through Colorado a couple years ago, and I went through a through a gas station or as a truck stop off the highway. And when I was checking out at the counter, they you know they'll have like candies and treats and stuff up there at the counter, right? Well, they had a all these boxes, you know, like a little uh, stand that was set up there right next to the register, and they were boxes of crickets of uh, dead crickets, and it's literally called crickets. I just I just said crickets. And they had different flavors, and one of them was um, sea salt, like sea salt flavors. So I went ahead and bought that. I haven't eaten them. I still have them. They're here. But uh, the lady at the counter, I talked to her about it. I was like, is this real or is this like a novelty thing? And she's all paranoid and serious. This is like an old school, unrepentant hippie. Uh, had all these pins all over her, uh, her shirt or her uh, jacket she's wearing over her uniform. It was all like peace, love, all that kind of stuff. Long gray hair, you know, older lady. Fine, right? Fine, fair enough. But, but she's all serious. She's like, yeah, yeah, you know, we're all going to be having to eat that soon, you know. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, it's coming, you know, food shortage. And she's talking about that stuff. This is a few years ago. Um, of course, she's she's you know one of these people who's who's into that, you know, who thinks this is a good idea. Meanwhile, we realize it's all agenda. Because if you don't want to take your you know, potion, then uh, maybe they can get things into you through the food, right? Eat food. Oh my gosh, there's a uh, shortage of real meat, guys. We're all going to have to go to this uh, fake meat now, okay? It's all right. You'll be all right. Louisiana teacher and her cop husband. This one's gross. It's a news story, though. Uh, Louisiana teacher and her cop husband were caught feeding her students a uh, that you know, a substance filled cupcakes busted for being pedos. This all started in December of 2019 when these two individuals, a deputy in Livingston Parish and his teacher wife, who was a middle school teacher, um, got caught by Adobe. They were photoshopping things. Adobe turned them into authorities in Louisiana, which launched an investigation. Authorities with the attorney general's office showed up at the couple's house. They found this safe full of uh, hard drives, computers, thumb drives, things like that. And all of it was encrypted with a software called Keep My Data Safe. 
And so essentially they had to come in and decode everything. And when they decoded everything, they were alarmed at what they saw. They saw child porn. They saw child rape. They also saw what appeared to be uh, this deputy who was ejaculating on sweets that were then being served to his wife's class. My God, my God. So did, do we know if any of the children were actual students or relatives or were these just videos that they collected off of the Internet? So according to the court documents that we have, the kids that were served the sweets were definitely students in her class. Um, they photoshopped um, apparently the kids' photos and, and they had pictures of the children eating the sweets, the cupcakes that he had ejaculated on. In terms of the actual victims that were raped by these individuals, we're told that um, they possibly were uh, some of their close associates or people that they knew. Wow, just mind blowing. She's a teacher and of course he is a former deputy and she's a former teacher. I think they're estranged now, right? They they've divorced. So she divorced him and you know if it gives you any indication of what their plan of attack is, they immediately filed for divorce. She actually just struck a plea deal with some of the prosecutors here. So she now has to testify against him at trial and she has agreed to do that in exchange for what some people in this area are calling a light sentence. Um, she'll probably do about 40 years and will probably be eligible for good time, so maybe 20 years. Um, so we'll see what happens. You know, these. what's really interesting about this case is these are the people that you teach your children to trust. You teach your children to trust law enforcement. You teach them to trust your, their teacher and to think that they can do something as sick and twisted as this. I mean, it really just has this whole community in utter shock. Exactly. And you're exactly right. They're supposed to be the best of us, our educators, our law enforcement officers. And they it reminds me of an old school X-Files episode where all the school teachers were uh, your devil worshipers. But he found out that there were all these other people in town. And again, it was, you know, like the uh, the established people, you know, lawyers, doctors, all kinds of people, firefighters, you know, basically everybody. You've seen that. It's a trope. You've seen a lot of movies and shows before, but you know, it's true, too. I mean, there are uh, these people um, among us, you know, satanic super soldiers, if you will. But there's people around us. They infiltrate churches. They infiltrate government. And they're straight up Satan worshipers and witches and warlocks. And you know, they meet in the shadows, right? But they only tell the truth to each other, just like people that run the world. Same idea. All right, we'll move on. I think we've heard enough on that. MSNBC gets a warm welcome from Canadians while spewing propaganda. This is nice to see here. Uh, being harassed, screamed out as you can hear. Uh, this is the one thing, uh, Yasmin, that unites these groups that have been protesting here in Ottawa for the last few weeks is the way they feel about the media. And they are venting it uh, loudly and uh, often, as you can tell. So uh, we are, apologize, we're not kind of the kind or gentler Canada you may be used to say. You're a real true hero, bud. True What's hero. Your name? Fucking sleaze bags. Get a real fucking job. Lost, I've lost the idea. Fucking sack the exactly goddamn it. shit. Who's all? Who pays your check? Who's all? Um, it's all good, guys. Guys, the media is the virus. You guys disgusting. Thanks, Yasmin. So Appreciate it. I'm from the communist country. I don't want to live with. There you go. There you go. The people hate you. As well they should, they're propagandists, these news, so-called news people. Guy refuses to pay the people he hired after the work he's done, so he smashes everything. I've shown you guys a few of these before. Give me thousand dollars, fix. Are you going to give it? I ask you one more time. No, 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 no. No, no, no. See, who was the fool? Why didn't you pay me let me go home? Instead, you say fix it, and I get it. Pay me, No. Video him, video him, dad. Video him, video him, video him. Video him. Go back in the car, go and get in the car. Go and get in the car, go and get in the car. Get in the car. 
We've got the money, yeah? There's a key to Morgan. On the floor. Video him, Dan! Video him, Dan! Video him, Dan! Put it, 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 there you go. Last one I showed was uh, it was in a it was a bathroom inside someone's home. This guy had it tiled and it looked all good, and then the lady just decided she didn't want to pay, so we went in there and did the same thing, broke it all up. Antharda member screams like a little girl when a guy in a F. Jiden shirt shows up and beats his butt. Now these people run in packs because they're all cowards anyway. But this is one that doesn't have a pack around. And he's one on one, and this is what happens. What's up? What's up? You, uh, what's up? Are you deaf or something? What? Or black? Damn. The fuck? What's up, Rome, bitch? Fuck. Rome, bitch. Oh, okay, Okay, we kind of get the idea. I'm not a fan of the violence either way, but but after seeing so many uh, hours of footage of those that that group doing things to people, individuals, or just maybe a couple of people surrounded by 20 of them. You know, I, I know I shouldn't think it's good to see it. You know, they get a little back, but uh, sometimes it's nice to see. Little French soy tyrant Macron suddenly shuts down 4 million, you know what, passports. This will be for the uncensored show. Three months early to force people to boost. But you get the idea from the uh, headline. I'll play that on the Uncensored show on Monday. Cover up. The CDC is refusing to release data on the effects of boosters on 18 to 49 year olds. Little old lady is robbed while praying in church by two women posing as parishioners. Yeah, this is like it's in the church. It's a good example of uh, the evil in the churches that's happening. There's no audio. But I'd seen the full clip before the lady that's blurred out, you know, she goes in there and sits down shortly after these other two ladies come in, one sits behind her, the other in front of her. Then the one in front of her comes around and does this, gets on her knees and starts holding her hand and prays with the lady while the girl behind her is reaching into her purse and pulling out, uh, you know, the wallet, taking everything. There you go. Turn your hymnals to page 354, page 354. Military helicopter crashes in Hawaii, killing four soldiers. It just shows the aftermath, but... It was like, it was like this. Did anybody film it? No. That's another one, because I'm, I'm not sure if the person who is piloting that had the... Uh, but that's another one you can look up. I've shown a a compilation clip, I think it was last week, of a lot of uh, airplanes falling from the sky now over the last few months. Suddenly, right, all these airplanes, small airplanes, big airplanes, mostly smaller, but still, it's it's in helicopters. And here's another one. So people are wondering, you know, could it be the, you know, potion? Public, public safety showed up at Father's Place today looking for me, this says. Everybody, I'm fine. I am of sound body, mind, and soul, and I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not thinking about hurting myself. I'm actually the farthest from it. So do not send people to do a wellness check on me. I will not be there. <laughs> I don't think people have quite grasped 
what exactly it means by enacting the war measures. See, once that's enacted, that means certain things to other countries on the geopolitical stage. Like the FIPA agreement, if Canada was to ever become politically unstable, Chinese soldiers have the right to be on Canadian soil to protect Chinese interests. And we know that they have a lot of their money embedded in the Canadian economy after Stephen Harper. Same with NAFTA. NAFTA comes into play here as well. If Canada becomes politically unstable, doesn't Biden take control of North America? There's a lot of shit at play here, people. And for those of you that don't understand what it means when Justin Trudeau does the War Measures Act, he's declaring war. You can call it the Emergencies Act all you want. It's the same fucking thing. So he's declaring war on the Canadian people. Where have we seen this before? Let's look at another similarity to some of our lessons in history. He's freezing the, the accounts of his political opponents, not just the truckers or the truckers' convoy. This is his political opponents. Do you think the PPC might have donated to the truckers or Randy Hillier? Wouldn't you say that those are Justin Trudeau's political opponents and they're going to freeze their accounts? Hell, Carla Homolka still has a battle, uh, a banking account. Luca Magnata still has a bank account. The Toronto 18 that tried to blow up fucking the CN Tower. They still have bank accounts. Didn't they blame Hitler for all this shit? So you're going to freeze their accounts, come after them criminally. The Ottawa police said anybody that's been involved in the protest, they're going to come after for months to come after them criminally. So, like it or not, you're going to become political refugees. They are offering asylum in certain uh, states to people in Canada. And why do you think that is? This is fucking serious, people. Sorry I'm not down there trying to get hot clips of what's going on next. That All right, I think we get it. Besides, the uh, that act's been dropped now. Canada is on the... Like I said, doesn't mean the show's over. Because uh, here's this. They're now creating commercials. This is a commercial in Canada about the digital passports. So even though... You know, even though there seems to be some wins taking place, you got to keep your eye always right on the bigger picture. So let's take a look at this one. Got Chubbs. I got Chubbs over here with me. There we go. Good kid. He's a good kid. Cusp of a revolutionary innovation that will transform the way Canada is on the cusp of a revolutionary innovation that will transform the way Canadians authenticate themselves online and protect their identity digital ID. All of us are living in a digital world, but we're tethered to an analog world of how sorry. we identify ourselves. Memorizing countless online passwords, carrying government-issued licenses, plastic cards, and more. Digital ID is a way for Canadians to identify themselves to government, businesses, and each other electronically with ease and rock-solid security, without the need to present physical documents. One interconnected network. A federated digital ID ecosystem developed in collaboration with Canada's best and brightest talent from our banks, telecommunication companies, law enforcement, the social and credit uh, system. It would have the power and security to store every Canadian's electronic identity and attributes. And it would unlock countless opportunities for Canadians to verify who they are mm. safely, quickly, and securely, while only revealing the information necessary for each transaction. A fast, easy, and secure way to bank sign up for government services, renew driver's licenses or health cards, shop, travel, and more. Canada's banks are perfectly situated to help lead the creation of a federated digital ID system between government and the private sector. The World Economic Forum agrees that banks and financial institutions should lead the path forward for digital ID. Banks are highly regulated and trusted. They have advanced cybersecurity and privacy technology, and they have the infrastructure to operate provincially and nationally. Banks are also at the forefront of working with fintech startups who are bringing revolutionary mobile and online products and services. To anyway, this is from the Canadian Bankers Association, so they're putting it just right out there, even saying the World Economic Forum agrees. So, you know, if they agree, yeah, of course, banks, because they got to get access to the money, you know, or at least cutting people off from their money. And then there's the food wars that they're creating. Hello. 
Canadian loggers getting ready to protest Trudeau, Trudeau, Trudeau tyranny. It's from three days ago. My Canadians, I just want to put this out there. Us loggers out west in true Canada, our breakup time comes here in March. So I want to put this out and this, I'm, <laughs> I want to put this out. You think you got problems now, Trudeau? Wait till us loggers come out there. We're going to be done working here. It's coming very, very, very shortly. And if you think that you have too many trucks down there, believe me, us loggers are coming. We're getting organized. We're coming. And uh, yeah, we're going to come and support, support our Canadians down there. You don't have a chance. You, you're done. You're, you've lost. Admit it. Like you've lost, man. Like, anyways, it's up. We're going to be coming. We're organizing. So share this, people. I want to be Tell me now what a 10 year old has a message for Justin Turdo. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I want to be respectful. So, I have them, some things to say. First of all, I'm 10 years old. I'm 10, and I'm going to be saying some things about these protests. Okay? I love protests. Policemen, I do not love what you're doing. Policemen are supposed to be here on the world to be saving and protecting. And right now, what the policemen are doing is not saving and is not protecting. Whatever Justin Trudeau is telling the policemen to do shouldn't be what's done. Justin Trudeau, you're a prime minister. You shouldn't be immature telling policemen on what to do with other innocent people. You can't be shooting a news reporter with a rubber bullet just because she has her own opinion to be going to protests. Protests is what is going to be helping people to get back to normal lives. I don't know why. If people are so sick of COVID right now, then why are you against protests? For the people who are hating COVID, but they still like the vaccine and what Justin Trudeau is telling people to do, if you're tired of COVID and you want to go back to a normal life, then maybe agree with the protests. Maybe just agree with the protesting people. Maybe don't agree with Justin Trudeau because what he's doing is immature and ignorant and selfish just because he thinks the vaccine is going to help any in any way. But it's not helping at all because it's getting people to the point where you have to tell policemen to hurt innocent people. I do not think you're a good prime minister if you're telling um, the police to hurt innocent people, innocent people in your country that you're supposed to be protecting too, Mr. Justin Trudeau. If you're a prime minister and you're here to help the world and your Canadian people, then you shouldn't be hurting them. And if it's not your doing, you're the one telling the policeman to hurt them. Please stop hurting the protesters. Oh. All right. Thanks, young lady. At least I think that's a young lady. Why do Democrats want you to hate Putin? Uh, this is from Tucker Carlson. Let's see what Fox News is saying over here. About all this. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, since the day that Donald Trump became president, Democrats in Washington have told you you have a patriotic duty to hate Vladimir Putin. It's not a suggestion, it's a mandate. Anything less than hatred for Putin is treason. Many Americans have obeyed this directive. They now dutifully hate Vladimir Putin. Maybe you're one of them. Hating Putin has become the central purpose of America's foreign policy. It's the main thing that we talk about. Entire cable channels are now devoted to it. Very soon, that hatred of Vladimir Putin could bring the United States into a conflict in Eastern Europe. All part of the plan. Before that right? happens, it might be worth asking yourself, since it is getting pretty serious, what is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? Has he shipped every middle class job in my town to Russia? Did he manufacture a worldwide pandemic that wrecked my business and kept me indoors for two years? 
Is he teaching my children to embrace racial discrimination? Is he making fentanyl? Is he trying to snuff out Christianity? Does he eat dogs? These are fair questions, and the answer to all of them is no. Vladimir Putin didn't do any of that. So why does permanent Washington hate him so much? If you've been watching the news, you know that Putin is having a border dispute with a nation called Ukraine. Now, the main thing to know about Ukraine, for our purposes, is that its leaders once sent millions of dollars to Joe Biden's family. Not surprisingly, Ukraine is now one of Biden's favorite countries. Biden has pledged to defend Ukraine's borders, even as he opens our borders to the world. That's how it works. Invading America is called equity. Invading Ukraine is a war crime. So with every day, we move closer to some kind of conflict with Russia, conflict that could easily spin out of control, given that the people running this have no fine motor skills. The administration assures us this has nothing at all to do with repaying Joe Biden's personal debts to Ukrainian oligarchs. Not at all. It's completely and totally unrelated. The point here is to defend democracy. Not that Ukraine is a democracy. It is not a democracy. Ukraine's president has arrested his main political opponent. He has shut down newspapers and television stations that have dared to criticize him. So in American terms, you would call Ukraine a tyranny. But Joe Biden likes Ukraine, so Putin bad war good. How will this conflict affect you? It will affect you quite a bit, actually. Energy prices in the United States are about to go way up. And that means that everything you buy will become much more expensive. From the food you eat to the car you drive to tickets you need to take your family on vacation this summer, assuming you can still afford vacation by then. You're about to become measurably poor. That's not a guess. Joe Biden has admitted this. On the other hand, you're going to win an important moral victory against dastardly old Vladimir Putin, who is much, much worse than Justin Trudeau, just so you know. So you can feel good about that because, because, let's see, come to think of it, why would you feel good about that? It seems like a pretty terrible deal for you and for the United States. Hunter Biden gets a million dollars a year from Ukraine, but you can no longer afford to go out to dinner. That's not a bargain. So what are we missing here? What we're missing is the big picture. And that's why Joe Biden has dispatched Kamala Harris to explain that picture to us. Kamala Harris's old job was to open America's border. She did that. Her new job is to keep Ukraine's borders closed. Kamala Harris was in Europe the other day to explain the whole thing. She began with a history lesson, letting the European peoples know about their recent past, which she assumes they've forgotten since so few of them speak English. She opened with a traditional salutation, listen guys, because that's the way real historians and states <laughs> people talk. Watch Kamala educate. I mean, listen, guys, we're talking about the potential for war in Europe. I mean, let's really take a moment to understand the significance of what we're talking about. It's been over 70 years. And through those 70 years, as I mentioned yesterday, there has been peace and security. We are talking about the real possibility of war in Europe. Listen, guys, you may be Europeans who live in Europe, but you don't fully understand the ramifications of war in Europe. That's your problem. The thing about Europe, you've had peace and security for more than 70 years. Kamala Harris just told the Europeans that. And that, by the way, is true if you don't count the breakup of Yugoslavia, which caused hundreds of thousands of deaths in the 1990s, or the Soviet occupation of half of the landmass, which amounted to the enslavement of hundreds of millions. But apart from that, Mrs. Lincoln, it's all been peace and security in Europe until now. now. The Soviets were fine. Vladimir Putin is bad. What do we do about that? Kamala Harris explained that too. Watch. And the allied relationship is such that we have agreed that the deterrence effect of these sanctions is still a meaningful one, especially because remember also, we still sincerely hope that there is a diplomatic path out of this moment. And within the context then of the fact that that window is still opening, although open, although it is absolutely narrowing, but within the context of a diplomatic path still being open, the deterrence effect we believe has merit. Got that? Take a breath and let it sink in. Here it is again. Quote, we have agreed that the deterrence effect of these sanctions is still a meaningful one, especially because, remember also, we still sincerely hope that there is a diplomatic path out of this moment. And within the context, then, of the fact that the window is still opening, still open, although it is absolutely narrowing, but within the context of a diplomatic path still being open, the deterrence effect, we believe, has merit. <laughs> well, of course it has merit. The only question is, what the hell are you talking about? And the answer is Kamala Harris has no real idea what she's talking about. She can't even point to the direction of what she's talking about. 
Her mouth opens and predigested chunks of language come tumbling out in no particular order. It's soothing to listen to until you try to understand what it means. As Kamala Harris told us just last month, quote, it is time for us to do what we have been doing. And that time is every day. Huh? To which we'd respond, that's right, Ms. Vice President Person. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Learn it, love it, live it. And while you're at it, eat, pray, love. You can just imagine Vladimir Putin's reaction to all of this when an aide drops a translated transcript of Kamala Harris's remarks on his desk. The Slavic mind is a hall of mirrors. It sees traps at every intersection. Clearly, Kamala Harris must be setting some sort of trap for the Russians here. Her words don't make sense, but she can't possibly be dim and childish. America is a superpower. It would never put a senile man and an imbecile in charge of the country. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. His lips were moving, but there was no... Dana Coverstone, Rockwell Dream. It's from February 12th. Let's see if I can play some of this. So both the grandfather and the grandmother have told these kids, stop it, shut up, listen, full foyer, or the area before you walk. Shared it during our prayer event this morning. Um, our sound right now, because of our internet speed, has not been very good at all. Did not really announce I'm going to be on here doing this. I've got comments turned off for a reason. Just doing private chat. I want to share this dream. It's called the Rockwell dream. And I think once you hear it, you'll understand why. Uh, I believe it was a very, very straightforward dream. So I uh, had this last night, February 12th, 2022. I dreamed that I was standing in a small rural foyer or the area before you walk into a sanctuary. Some, some churches call that a vestibule. Um, and I was drawn to a Norman Rockwell painting on the wall. It was that Thanksgiving freedom from want print that many of us are familiar with. A lady putting the turkey down, the grandfather standing behind, and everybody sitting around the table for his family. This painting, this picture was in a large gold painted simple frame surrounded by artificial green ivy as i stared at the picture i was drawn into the scene and i was sitting at the table as the grandmother brought in the turkey the grandfather was looking behind uh looking out the window behind him and suddenly shut the blinds quickly and gave his wife a very very strange look and at that moment what sounded to me like gunfire and explosions were happening outside the window Several of the kids started to jump up from the table to look outside, and the grandmother flat out screamed at them. I mean, screamed at them. Sit down. Sit back down. And she said this. There's nothing going on outside. And she said it almost like staccato. There's nothing going on outside. And then she drew herself back into a peaceful smile form and went back to the turkey, almost as if nothing had happened. Those at the table knew that something was going on, though, and they started looking at their cell phones and pulling up news. When this happened, uh, the grandfather yelled at them to put their phones away and stay focused on the family gathering. So both the grandfather and the grandmother have told these kids, stop it, shut up, listen, there's nothing going on outside. He kept looking back at the window, though, every time there was a significant noise from outside. And the grandmother had one of those just fake <laughs> smiles that you know is just not real. She just kept smiling at the people and she kept carving the turkey and and just focused on it. There were plates passed to the grandmother. She filled each plate up and then sent it back around the table to feed the 10 to 12 people that were sitting at that table. The grandfather then told everybody to hold hands and he said he would pray. Well, Three people at the table were watching the window and seemed to be very concerned. They were, they were holding hands, but they were like this, looking at the window behind the grandfather. He then bowed his head and said to them, ignore what was happening outside because nothing was happening outside. So obviously, these two people are aware something's going on, but he said literally, Ignore what is happening outside because nothing is happening outside. Closed his eyes and began to pray. 
His lips were moving, but there was no sound coming out. But as he was doing this, the house began to shake, just sudden shakes. The grandmother um, kept watching the three kids, or the three people who seemed concerned. And she kept saying, make sure that you keep your eyes shut and be quiet. And once again, the grandfather is praying. There's no words coming out of his mouth. His lips are moving, but there's no sound coming out. And every time he, he keep kind of turning like this to look at the window behind him. But he kept his eyes shut. His mouth was moving. No words were coming out. He just kind of kept looking, obviously aware that something was out there. The noise outside got closer to the house, and it shook a few more times. And each time the grandfather would flinch like this. He would have the hands, and he would pull the hands up like this, but he would flinch. He would noticeably just a jerk, almost like a flinch, when the house would shake and the noise was outside. He then said, amen, very loud like that, very exaggerated. Smiled at all those at the table, like, okay, guys, we're all right, it's fine. Then he said, let's eat and pretend it's all good. People began eating at the table. And after a few bites, you could see on the faces, these people were like, oh. There were hands coming up to their, to their mouths, and you could tell faces like they bit into something that was very, very sour or bitter. The grandfather spoke up very loudly and said again, the food is so good. This food is so good. He was exaggerating it like that. The three people, and there there was like a mother, a father, and a teenage son. Those three people that expressed concern earlier looked at each other and discussed, and the teenage boy spoke up and said, no. This is really bad. At this point, the grandmother stood up and yelled, don't you talk to your pastor that way. She threw her napkin on the table in disgust. She got up and she covered all, she grabbed a big, a big, uh, like a pitcher, had uh, gravy in it. And she covered all three of those people's plates, just those three people's plates. She covered them in gravy. I mean, it was coming over the top of the plate and pouring down. It covered everything on the plate. Then she said, this will make it easier to get it down, so stop complaining. The others kept chewing on their food, but they just, they were looking around, but you could tell they did not like the taste of it. It was not good. Then it was was then that I noticed that all these people, all the people, even the three people who were concerned, everybody was pale and and looked like they lost a lot of weight. They looked malnourished. Clothes were were ill-fitting on them. And then I heard a whistling sound, kind of like you hear when a missile's coming in. It's in, the, in the movie, it's like that. I can do it. Like that. It wasn't wind. It was a whistling sound. And suddenly, just it, it, the, the three people got up, looked out the window, and were concerned. We're like, everybody get down now. And so they jumped under the table. And in that moment, the house exploded. Uh, there was smoke, there was fire, there was destruction. I I was like a part of the scene, but I, I, could, I couldn't feel heat, I couldn't feel wind, but I could just see the mess around me. And when it cleared, I could see the table was still there. But the damage to the people who had been sitting around, it was catastrophic. They were all dead, and they'd been dismembered. There was blood everywhere. We were just kind of laying there. Plates of food were still on the table. The three people had been concerned, crawled out from under the table, and they sat down. And at the opposite end of the table from the dead grandfather now was the man that I see so often in my dreams. He pointed to each of the three people and he said, hmm, you, were wise, you were wise to listen to the word, for that's what spared you from the destruction that's here and now. Warn the church to listen and to inspect every bite of their food. And warn those in the pulpit to stop feeding their people a lie. For I'm watching and I will destroy the poisoned well. 
and I will remove my light from their pulpit and the life from their eyes. Then he told them, go and find fresh water and truth that will feed your souls. And those three people got up from the, and they wiped, kind of wiped themselves off. But they went and they were hugging. They were holding on this man. They were thanking him for sparing them, for saving them. He simply said, you saved yourself by recognizing the truth was not being spoken. He then looked at me and said, warn the church and keep warning the church to seek the truth until I come. I think there's an obvious interpretation. I'll go ahead and stop there. If you want to hear the interpretation and all that, that's over on Dana Coverstone YouTube channel. God. Progressive Christians hate ex LGBTQ stories. This reads. Let's see what this is all about. God saved my life. And I don't. The reality is, is that a lot of progressive Christians look at this as a tragedy. They see him as not stepping into who he was made to be. But this man is flipping the script. No temptation has overtaken you that is common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. This fellow doesn't need to be defined by his sexual orientation or who he's attracted to. He's decided to flip the script and say, that does not define who I am. This applies to not only people that struggle with same-sex attraction, but anybody, anybody encountering their own sinful nature. It's about saying, hey, look, the world is telling me this is who I should be because it feels good. It feels natural. But who gets to define who I was meant to be? That's God. And God is welcoming, welcoming us today to step into a new identity because he has provided everything we need to escape the temptations that we experience. But the beauty is, is that when you encounter Jesus, man, he transforms the way you see the world. And those things that you once identified in, whether that was work, whether that was in who you were attracted to, whether that was in your, your talents and your gifts, you, you, you used to say that was who I was. That was who made up made you whole in a sense, but now you're seeing the brokenness that that was, that that was incomplete, that, that, that never would and will fulfill you. And now you see Christ welcoming you into something so, so much greater. This man isn't a victim by no means. This man is stepping into the victory that Christ has had on his behalf. The world will tell him that, that he's making a mistake, that he's denying a core aspect of who he is. But this fellow, we, we need to follow his, his lead in this. He's relying on God to help him overcome those temptations. And that's what we should all be doing every single day. If the guy who made this TikTok is watching this video, love you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Your encouragement to us all. This video is brought. All righty. Thanks, sir. In a coma, whatever. 25 year old shares testimony of heaven and hell. Let me see. I think it starts around here. But you're still driving him to the emergency room. You have no idea he's going through all of this. When you heard this part of it, I know there's more to it. When you heard this part of it later on, what did you think? It's amazing how prayer things shift with, with can't breathe. You're, you can see everything is so distant. There's no. You are. Yeah. Yeah. So I laid hands on him and I started crying because torment was crazy. And as I started playing, praying, it got worse. And then I really started crying out to the Lord and rebuking Satan and said, the blood of, blood of Jesus against you. He shall live and not die. I started quoting scripture like crazy and, and scripture works. I'm going to tell you. And when I was praying for him, all of a sudden his back arched in his seat, veins were coming out of both sides of his head. Tremendous pressure. I seen his faces do stuff I never seen before. And all of a sudden, he grabbed his hoodie and he was pulling it like he had such a pain in his chest. And then as I was praying for him and crying out to the Lord, all of a sudden, he just passed out. Boom. So he was gone. So he was gone. I didn't know if he was dead or just passed out. But the Lord said, continue to prophesy into his life. Okay. So you're in the car driving him to the ER and he's not there. He, he's at least you know, in a coma, passed out as far as you know. So, Josh, what do you remember? You may not remember all that, but what 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 happened to you? At that moment, man, I remember being in a place of 
of the torment he's talking about, but I don't remember the physical state. Yeah. Like I don't remember anything as far as what's going on in the truck. I just knew what was going on in my mind. So one of the last things I remember was I was talking to her, boom, all of a sudden I went into like a torment of state. And that's one of the last things I remember clearly. I don't remember him. I couldn't see him praying or I couldn't remember anything like that. I just know what I was going through internally. Okay. Yeah. All right. So did you at some point leave your body or tell, tell yeah. me what happened? What, what, uh, take us to what we couldn't see, what dad couldn't see. Okay. So going from his point, when I started going through the torment and you start praying and things like that, uh, I felt myself falling. So the first thing you felt was yourself falling. falling. Yes. Like a real but, but you're in a car. What, what, what do you mean? In my mind, I went to a place of like, I can see my body falling from my eyes. Wow. Yeah. Like I, I can see what I'm seeing, but I can't react. It's like a sunken place. That's real. I know it's people, it's just a you know, movie and things like that, but that is real. That's because it gets, it's a point to where like you can hear and you can see but everything is so distant. There's nothing you can do about it. And I felt myself falling away from my eyes. And then all of a sudden, I want myself go straight to hell. Straight where? Hell. Straight to hell. Mm -hmm. How right. do you know? How do you know? Before that point happened, my body, my soul left my body. So. No, you say your soul left your body. Yes. What was that like? I mean, how do you know your soul left your body? What because it was an aerial view. I was passed out or, or going what I was going through first and then passed out. But I, I can see where my dad was going. I told him the lanes he was changing. I, saw the, I told him the cars he was going behind. Everything. And my so, dad was so after you came back, you told your dad everything that happened everything. while you were passed while out. While I was passed out. And you, yes. you were like in the air looking it was at like it? An area, I felt like an eagle. That's what, exactly what I felt like. It looking down at yourself. Looking down. I can see almost the whole city, but I can also see my dad at the same time. Wow. It was something unbelievable. And then when it got to that point, I went straight to hell. You went straight to hell. How do you know it was hell? What, what did you? It was you a, say? number one, it was a very short fall. You go from an area of you and then boom, you can feel, I can feel myself get pulled down immediately. I went straight to hell. And when I get there, it is not like a lot of the movies and, and, and some books and stuff. It's nothing like that. Um, it's hot. But there's no fire, but it's very hot. Just say that again. That's an important point. You said it's hot, but there's it's no hot, fire. but there's no fire. Okay. Uh, it's like molten rocks. It's like molten rocks. It's really hot. It's really orange. It's glowing. I'm talking thousands of degrees glowing. Like it's not supernatural in the way of heavenly, but this is still a supernatural thing because the ground is thousands of degrees, but your feet aren't burnt. You're very hot, but you're not passed out. Wow. Right. And see, a lot of people don't realize that the Bible actually says that hell will one day be cast into the lake of fire. Yes. So hell right now is not necessarily not the fire. fire, but the revelation says it will one day be cast into the lake cast of fire. Into, yes. So you saw that place right now. That, mm -hmm. uh, and where, where do you think it was? Because you say you went down. Where, you know, you have any it, sense as to where you were? If I had to take an educated guess, I would say more like the center of the earth is what it felt like. It felt like the center because it's... it's it's glowing, molten rocks all around you. It's like people are standing on shells of rock. It's very hot. It's glowing. You're very thirsty. You can't breathe. You're extremely hungry. There's extreme torment. Mm. I mean, the odor is terrible. I mean, everything about hell you can imagine is everything bad you can imagine life is what hell is. You can't breathe. You can't talk. You're in torment. You're screaming. It's very hot. It's not fire, but it's very hot. Um, you can't seem to grasp the concept of real life because it's all of your worst. Just for a second, take your worst thoughts and your worst experiences and stretch that for eternity. I Never mean, I mean take take the deepest hurts and the deepest things, the worst mistakes, all of those things. And the devil puts it to where like you are thinking about that stuff so much. You are losing your mind for the rest of your life, for eternity, forever. We're not talking about 10 minutes. You know, we're not talking about having a bad day or a bad week or a bad shift at work. We're talking about for as long as time could ever last, eternity, you're going through torment, losing your mind. Now, the Bible says that 
in that place, the worm dies not. When you look at that word worm, it actually means your conscience. Mm -hmm. Your So what you're saying is the torment is, is oftentimes thoughts. It is your life. You're thinking of your mistakes. You're thinking of things you've done wrong, people you've hurt, things that have hurt you, people that have died. You remember your life. Hell isn't a made up, he's just making you feel crazy. Everything you ever went through, even things that you didn't go through that you could have went through, he shows you. So in hell, not only are you hurt from the things you went through, but you're hurt because now you realize how good God really was to you. I'll stop there because it's almost an hour long. If you want to see the whole thing, it's on fresh anointing. 25-year-old shares testimony of heaven and hell from March 1st, which is actually my birthday, March 1st, 2020. This is something one of my friends on Instagram sent me. Uh, it's a music festival, and just look how crazy wicked this is. It's crazy. Yeah, it's playing that house music or whatever, but get the as above, so below at the top, and then an actual, like, total as above, so below the other person down, up and down, the up and down system. I'm not going to play this because it'll put a uh, block on the show. That demons are real. My testimony from New Age Witchcraft to Jesus appearing in my bedroom. Um, that's on Rima Angelique's channel. That was from October 2021. That was an interesting one. Dan Dix is uh, one of these fellers who's been around in the, quote, truth you know, community uh, for many years. He's... Um, one of the few people that are featured in both of my scariest movie ever made. So I've got clips from him in both of those. So anyway, if you're familiar with him, maybe you're not, but he's really been out there for a long time, putting in the work. Uh, he's been you know, banned from YouTube and all the other channels, like so many other people. And I think he got sick somehow. So let's see. I'm not entirely sure what I, I think he explains it here. Oh, buddy right by my side he knows i'm currently down but certainly not out guys i just wanted to give you a quick update on what's going on with me here in ottawa um in case you missed it i was on the front lines covering the protest when uh one of the officers decided to ram his baton into my ribs and kind of kidney area over there and uh yeah if you didn't see that Check it out. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. I'm, tr I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Shit, shit. Okay, I was just brutally attacked. Ow. Oh, God. Holy. Oh, oh shit, 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 shit. Oh, God. Oh, they're getting trampled. That... Oh, this is brutal. Guns And right now. I'll go ahead and stop there, but if you're interested, you can see the whole update on Press for Truth. Over on Bit Shoot. 20th, 2022. Riot police in Ottawa are UN NATO forces, claims this man right here. I have received news that the UN has arrived in Ottawa. In fact, they've been there for quite some time because the Riot Gear Squad, they are not Canadians. In fact, they are speaking German because they are from the UN and from NATO. I have many reports to confirm this. Please be aware that they are not there for the benefit of the people. This is an attempt by the people operating the government to cling to their power they thought was theirs. It was not theirs. It never was. It is our power that we granted them so that they may act in our benefit. However, it is important to know that the time has come to stand our ground, not to fight, but to stand in peace. These people from the UN may try to instigate violence or provoke you to anger. 
This is why they are running over us with horses and pushing against us. Please do not fall for it. Stand your ground, but do it peacefully. Protect what is rightfully yours. All right, we got it, sir. Thank you. Veteran, the RCMP are just a criminal gang impersonating real cops from four days ago. Hey everyone, Stu here, Real Canadian Liberal Podcast. It's 12 minutes, so I won't play it all. video from uh, last night. It's just gone up a little bit ago, but i uh, been looking at some of the news feeds out of Ottawa, and I thought I might comment a little bit. Um, it's um, not a good day. We got grandmothers, peaceful protesters calling for love and unity being run over by police horses in Ottawa. What's what happened yesterday? A uh, Canadian Forces veteran, wounded in Afghanistan in 2008, beaten up by cops. Peaceful woman, woman protester, smacked in the head with a rifle butt by a cop. Now I use the term cop very loosely here, because I know there are some real cops out there. But the guys that are doing this stuff in Ottawa aren't. They're not real cops. They're wearing a cop uniform. They may even have a police ID badge, but they're not police. And I'll stop there. So that goes on for quite a while. If you want to see that, it's from a veteran, the RCMP or criminal gang impersonating real cops on Apple Island on BitChute. Yeah, I mean, they tried to... Kyle Rittenhouse is the, uh, the young man who is defending himself. And he uh, injured a couple people with his bang bang. Well, uh, he actually won some massive. Uh, oh, he actually he won his court case. So now he's going to go after all these people who were talking smack about him online, kind of like that Nick Sandman that did. He uh, sued CNN, uh, won millions and dollars, millions of dollars. Imprison you for the rest of your life. It wasn't coverage. It was advocacy. You have a lot of potential targets to sue yourself. Will you be suing any of these news organizations? And if so, when? Um, well, right now we're looking at quite a few. Uh, wow! Okay! Politicians, celebrities, athletes, Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Dear God, my friends. Oh, yeah, warning. Uh, language warning on, on a salty cracker here. He's going for some more commie blood. Go get it, son. Go get yourself some more scalps. That's right. Kyle Rittenhouse unleashed, my friends, despite the fact that that cocksucker soy boy finger in the binger and his boyfriend lunchbox would not give Kyle Rittenhouse back his AR-15. Kyle Rittenhouse is still going to go out there. And now that he's done cleaning up the mean streets of Kenosha, He's going to go clean up the mean streets of, I don't know, media, I guess at this point. Go get him, son. He was on Tucker Carlson last night. I know a lot of people, they don't watch Fox News' asshole, and they don't watch Tucker Carlson. So I will bring you the juiciest bits of what happened last night. And this kid came out, and he goes, yeah, I'm going to fuck these people up. Now, fuck these people. They try to denigrate and slander me, and they try to form an opinion in the mass psychosis formation that these dipshits in the uh, sleeping, slumbering normies have out there, that I'm a terrorist and I'm a white supremacist and I'm a murderer. And for that, even after I've been acquitted, I'm going to fuck them up. Whoopi Goldberg going to need a new wig, dirt cheap, because she won't be able to afford whatever the fuck is on the top of her head. You see this? I don't understand what is going on with Whoopi Goldberg. That <laughs> This chick looks like something out of... Uh, that uh, movie, <laughs> Battle something for Battlestar Earth, Battle Empire Earth. The one with John Travolta. <laughs> the fucking dude. It's got like a fucking mop on his head. It's fucking weird. It's weird how that works. If there was going to be a reboot of that movie, you could put Whoopi Goldberg in there. She wouldn't even have to change up her wig. But anyway, he going for it, friends. The key phrase over here is they keep calling, even after he's acquitted, they keep calling him a murderer. Can't do that. Can't do that. Even uh, Brave Browser over here will explain to you. The definition of a murderer is somebody who's done it unlawfully. Right? The dude's been acquitted by a jury of his peers despite all of the odds, despite all of the efforts of all of these people that he's about to go fuck legally. 
he was able to get a jury of his peers to acquit him for shooting again a pedophile. I don't even say alleged pedophile. Dude was a pedophile. He was a fucking pedophile. Shot that dude. An alleged pedophile grandma beater and an alleged pedophile burglar. All of them shot. All of these fucking dipshits blasted in a mostly peaceful protest for BLM setting shit on fire. He was acquitted. He's not a murderer, right? This was self-defense. He was attacked by a kid fucker. Insert the joke where Joe Rosenbaum, this is his name, Rosenbaum died doing what he loved, chasing minors, trying to reach for their pee-pees, pew-pews. <laughs> This is what he had to say. We're over at Infowars. Kyle Rittenhouse says he will sue. Whoopi Goldberg, get it done. Get it done, son. I was happy with that. I was still, I was like, nice, good. Fuck that cunt. Uh, and Ooh. other celebrities, politicians, and athletes. Oh, Roro. For calling him a murderer after he was acquitted. Can't do it. He can't do it. He can't, it's stupid. You're going to double down on stupidity? They're doubling down on stupidity because nobody holds these cocksuckers responsible. So again, we'll leave it to an 18-year-old kid, I guess, at this point. Well, I guess I guess putting down a fucking communist kid fucker wasn't enough for Kyle Rittenhouse, huh? We make statues of this kid. Wasn't enough. Now he's got to go do this mess too. That's fine. That's fine. Will I be a domestic terrorist when I donate to this? I'm already known as a criminal international terrorist for supporting truckers fighting against uh, the experimental injection to keep their fucking jarb. I don't even think you can leave Canada right now. Can you leave Canada without getting that fucking experimental jab up your butthole? Are you trapped in Canada? Unless you take that fucking Fauci sauce? Hey, you support those people, international terrorists. Now I'm going to support this kid, again, legally fucking these people up all over the place. Sign me up. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, uh, call him a murder after he was acquitted. Kenosha Shooter. Kenosha Shooter. The defender of Kenosha, Kyle Rittenhouse, plans to take aim at the people and organizations who called him a murderer, a white supremacist, among other things, in the run-up to his trial and subsequent acquittal. Yes, get it done. Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse defended himself and killed two men and wounded a third. <sighs> Almost got the hat trick, boys. Oh, uh, during confrontations a bit anti, but you already know this. You already know this. Anyway, uh, he's out here to say, look, look, I'm coming after these people. Gonna get Whoopi Goldberg. Um, so is he said Sank. Is is Chunky Yogurt's name Sank? If we, I thought it was Chank. I, does anybody know this dude's fucking name? Tell me you're irrelevant without telling me you're massively irrelevant. Nobody knows how to pronounce your motherfucking name. I used to watch this fucking show. <laughs> when Anna didn't need an entire gallon of paint on her fucking face. I used to watch it when they were going after Hillary Clinton when I was a stupid fucking libtard. I was like, oh, they're going against Hillary Clinton. Good. Okay. These are, these are, these are Democrats I could trust. They're going after the establishment Hillary Clinton. And then, you know, they, they fucking stay with one full fucking scale potato. And, uh, oh, this is why the premise everywhere. Everybody watch out. Oh, my God. This is all Republicans are fucking Nazis. No, 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 no. No one knows your fucking name. You're so relevant. Nobody even knows your fucking name. Anyway, he's about to make you famous. <laughs> he's about to make you fucking famous, Chunky Yogurt. You're in fucking trouble. This kid going buffalo hunting. <laughs> all right. I'll stop there. You watch the whole thing on Salty Cracker. Bit shoot channel. Victim of the Australian government's use of the LRAD weapon on peaceful protesters are showing their injuries now. It's like a compilation. So for those listening, it's just a really a compilation showing some people's tweets and messages about it. Left the rally with a... Oh, there it is. It's a little update. I think I'm going to just do it now while I can. Um... We've entered the Queensland state now, so we're back on home soil. Um, last night was fucking awful, even today. The nausea. Oh my god, I physically can't vomit because obviously now I've got no appetite, so I'm finding it hard to even eat. Drinking water makes you sick. My head is pounding. My lips are still just, they're fucking burning. Everything's still burning. I'm still, still cooking internally. So it's, 
the blood vessels don't even look like blood vessels anymore. It just looks looks like I've just got blood under my skin now. Ooh. Like just everything hurts wearing clothes, hurts shoes. It's just this is fucking painful. This isn't a fucking joke. What they've done is fucking wrong to so many people. But we can't let it stop here because I heard the bullshit of them stopping these mandates now. They're willing to stop these mandates now. Obviously, they've got more to hide and we need to get to the bottom of it. We can't just end it here. We need the answers of what all this bullshit was about. What their initial plan... We need... We can't stop fighting. Like, what they did is fucking evil. Like, this is treason. It's fucking treason. Perfect setup for that world court, right? Treason on their own people. Like, they need to be hung at the gallows. Like, this is fucked. I'm just, I'm not going to ramble on anymore. All right. So I want to share her testimony there. Watches thugs empty out a boutique store of over $25,000 worth of merchandise. So, yep, this is still happening. The Hydra dragon in the middle there. Everything. Everything must go. Wow. And that's what's left. Not much. They cleaned that place out, didn't they? Hydra dragon right in the middle there. TikTok welfare queen demands reparations or else bad things will happen. White people. Come here. Come here. Okay. Y'all need to sue the government. And I, wait, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Now, they owe us, black people, reparations. But they owe y'all too. They got y'all around here saying the N-word and stuff. People are knocking y'all ass out left and right. They got all these currents running around here. People are knocking their asses out left and right as well. And your kids are growing up not knowing their identity, not knowing who they are, not having a culture, don't know why granddad or grandma is the way that they are or even the way you are, and they're angry. You got a lot of issues going on, white people. Y'all got a lot of issues going on. But guess who's in fault? The government. Remember when y'all stormed in that capital and y'all was angry and y'all defecated all over the different offices and stuff in there? Remember when y'all killed that lady? Remember that? It was the government. This that is that. bigger than that because in the next 50 years or so, we don't got 50 people, years. It's going to be beating your goddamn asses every fucking way. You don't want that. I'll stop there because it's just this is a person who's been programmed by that racial division that is infiltrated everything. You see it everywhere, right? So it, another triple P, a perfectly programmed person, unfortunately. But they're everywhere. You're looking at a slave. Modern day slave to this system. Mm -hmm. Real angels caught on camera. Wow. From February 22nd. We'll be the judge of that. That's an animation. Okay, there's that one. I've seen that one before. I've seen that. I think there's a video. It looks like a hologram.
looks like the Princess Leia hologram from Star Wars. All right, short and sweet. Clinton booed and jeered as she leaves New York Hotel. Or nonsense, or some new right wing lie on Fox or Facebook. By the way, they've been coming after me again lately, in case you might have noticed. It's funny, the more trouble Trump gets into, the wilder the charges and conspiracy theories about me seem to get. So now his accountants have fired him, and investigations draw closer to him. And right on. Why am I not actually seeing the video of her getting booed and jeered? All right. Bad report there. The guy is trying to talk to UN foreign mercenaries. So these are some of the what people are believing her. No speak English. This guy says, kick them in the nuts. Anyway, that's, that's one way to, to start uh, communication. So perhaps these are the UN troops the last thing in Ottawa. You are the last fucking no name thing that's blocking us. Stop hindering us, man. We want our freedoms. Once we give them up, that's it. We'll never get them back. It takes broken promises to get people into communism and a revolution to get them out. And I trust you. Trust me. We don't want to fucking be on that side. See, that's what you got to pay attention to. I'm trying to read what's on the patch on the side there. It's hard to make out, but yeah, no name tags. Uh, they all look uh, like stormtroopers, right? Got their weapons out. Looks like something out of that movie Hostel. You seen that movie Hostel? You're literally the last thing holding us from having our freedoms back. You are the last fucking thing that's blocking us from freedom. Stop hindering us, man. We want our freedoms. Once we give them up, that's it. We'll never get them back. It takes broken promises to get people into communism and a revolution to get them out. And I trust you. Trust me. We don't want to There you go. Interesting, eh? Interesting. Who are these people? Hackers are placing QR codes at businesses. Wiped out by scammers. Stop scanning these QR codes when you're out in public. Here's why. If you don't want your bank account wiped out by scammers, stop scanning these QR codes when you're out in public. Here's why. A lot of these businesses place these QR codes on the front of their doors or inside because they want to offer customers special deals or discounts or even ways to pay. But what hackers are doing now is that they're printing out their own QR codes on stickers and they are placing it on top of the original QR code that the business have and you will never even know it. So now when you scan the hacker's QR code, you are now giving them all your personal information as well as all your banking information. If you go on Google, you can see so many articles of people getting their entire bank accounts wiped out. And Dr. Oz actually did an entire expose on this exact subject. You need to check out that video. It's really good. Don't become a victim and have your entire bank account wiped out simply by using a QR code. Be safe, be smart, and use wisdom. Follow for more tips. Good stuff, huh? Thanks, sir. Cool Four million people in France woke up to discovering that their vaccine passes have been deactivated. Again, I'll play that full clip on Monday. Kabbalah Harris in and we already seen the, the camel embarrassed herself again. Jen Psaki to Rob Lowe, artificial White House. You know, we've been talking about the fake White House forever now, but now it's actually right here in the mainstream. Artificial White House stage for Joe Biden was constructed. <laughs> Why? Of course, it was because of the COVID. Of course. Now it's all it's all a show. Let's see what the comments are. Perfect. Fake White House for fake president. There you go. Top comment. Exactly. All right. Good stuff. There you go, folks. It's all a movie at this point. We know who's pulling the strings behind Biden. Sociopath teacher claims grooming children with LGB propaganda is for health reasons. This comment has me hot. It's in response to a video that another creator did about the don't say gay in Florida bill that is currently um, up for vote. This is teaching your kids. And this commenter 
is saying that, you know, it's their right as a parent to keep their kids in the dark. And my response to them is you're wrong. Your child is, is entitled. We as a community are responsible for educating our children with sound and scientific knowledge right. about healthy human bodies, which includes sexuality. We do this for public health reasons so that children are empowered with their bodies to make sure that they are kept safe from people who would otherwise harm them and could also advocate for themselves and making sure that they are getting the care that they need Delusion. from their doctors, from their community, from their parents and families and friends to make sure that their bodies remain healthy and safe. If they don't know and don't understand what it means to be in a body with a mind and a heart that loves different than how your parents do, then you're not going to know that there's resources out there for you as a child, as a young person, as an adolescent, as a young adult. This commenter is wrong. Whatever. You're wrong. This is teaching your kids. This is teaching your kids. Children don't need to be focused on that kind of stuff. Gross adult stuff. Because all of that leads to talk of sexuality. So you got to explain to a rainbow child, you know, your child wants to be a rainbow child because children need protection, especially from the system because they get programmed pretty easy. So I see all this stuff heading towards the kids shows and cartoons and movies really trying to get on those kids. Biological male counselors were allowed to sleep in the same cabin as fifth grade girls. Why? Because rainbow people, because they identified as they them. Like the parents tell us that their children came home from camp. They were asking a lot of questions about gender and pronouns. The parents then reached out to the camp director who told them that counselors, biological males who identify as they them, are permitted to spend the night in cabins with the young girls. In the parking lot of Weaver Elementary School in Los Alamitos, a group of parents. No parent should feel the way I feel after knowing what could have happened to me. Look, their logo is a massive pentagram. Look at that. California Department of Education. I'm not surprised. Massive pentagram right there. Entry school in Los Alamitos, a group of parents. No parent should feel the way I feel after knowing what could have happened to my daughter. Upset by the sleeping arrangements at a school organized science camp. I contacted the school and I asked them if they were able to confirm that there was not a man actually sleeping in the same cabin as the girls. Uh, they were not able to confirm that. The parents say their fifth grade girls told them some of the biologically male counselors at Camp Pally in San Bernardino identified as they, them, and spent three nights sleeping in cabins with the young girls. They're asleep, they use the shower, they go to the restroom. Camp Pally confirms per California state law, we place staff in cabins they identify with. Parents say they're not accusing anyone of a crime, but they are angry the school district did not let parents know about the policy. A spokesperson told us the district takes all complaints and concerns seriously and is currently investigating. <laughs> These parents say they just want others right. to be informed of the policy so they can make decisions for their own families. It's awful that children had to even experience this in fifth grade camp. If I was aware of it and I had initialed something saying that this was going to be done at this outdoor science camp, I would have kept my child home. Wow. Yeah, so those parents insist that they should have been informed about. Yeah, you think? Moms, dads out there, how would you feel? You're, uh, one of your kids went away to camp. I went to camps when I was a kid. Most of us do. Your kid goes to camp, comes back, and especially a little girl, 
had uh, biological men sleeping in the room, going to the bathroom, showering. Yeah, welcome to the beast system, right? School board member snaps after being exposed as a hypocrite, storms out of the meeting like a child. You know, this is going to be good. Good evening, school board members. My name is Alicia Vaught. Um, Senate Bill 739, as you guys probably know, is going to be signed into law very soon. So we're taking the power out of your hands and putting it back with the parents the way it should be. And it's very concerning that you guys would take the power away from the parents. And Ms. Cass, let me just say, point out real fast, when you were saying, introducing the public address comment, you said, this is the time we get to hear from the students, from the staff, and from the community members. You didn't mention parents, not one bit. And I think that's a big issue for Montgomery County because you guys do not like the parents. That's how I feel because you're taking the choice away from the parents and you're trying to take it and put it into your hands for financial reasons. I don't know. You're taking it away from us and we have parents law. So I just wanted to point that out. We sat here last year and listened to you guys preach to us about Governor Northam's executive orders and how we must follow them. You guys remember that? We do. So here's the governor that comes into office, but yet you don't want to follow his orders. Why is that? Why is it different from the last year when we were here to this year? Two different governors, two different political parties. So we were supposed to follow it last year, but not this year. That makes no sense. And it makes all of you a bunch of hypocrites, except for Dana and Jamie. Ms. Cass, you also yelled at me the last time I was here for taking off my mask, but here's a picture of you right here on Facebook with a crowd of people that's it. With no mask on. Uh, this Excuse is my me. time and I don't interrupt no. you. Here's another picture no. with you with a no mask on. I'm sorry, Ms. Vaught, you are done. If you are going to sit there and disparage a member of our school board, then you can sit down. If you have something effective to say. I am not going to sit here. This isn't about you anymore. It's about can we have a police officer, please? These people are such yes. cowards. I, no, I'm not scared. I don't care. I would like you to either talk about something. You can talk about something that is, concerns our school board. Is there something about our students you would like to talk about? Then talk about our students. Can you please ask Ms. Vaught to leave? Thank you. Okay. No. If you would like to finish about students, but if your idea is to stand there, huh? she should be able to say her piece. I've had to listen to people come and criticize me. People came here and criticized you last year? Absolutely. And I couldn't do anything about it. And as well as me, I was humiliated. So people came here and they talked about your mask to your face. They say, they showed pictures of your family. They showed pictures of your Yeah, they did worse. Doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't. it doesn't make it right, Jamie. You're right, but I had to say those are my. That's my family. That is all. Then fine. What do you think about our family? I am not. Our family is being suffocated today. I'm done. Time is, time is up. When she leaves or I leave. Time is up. Time is up. You can't deal with the truth. You don't need to no. It's not. It's not the truth. But that's not. That's not the issue. <laughs> baby, see you later, baby. I just want to say, parents and grandparents, if you guys want to run for office, if you want to run for a school board next seat, which you might have with them, I'll stop there because they keep her muted the rest of the time. Good for her. The product of being told you can be anything you want. Mm -hmm. Just imagine a massive troop of... Uh, Russian military men coming over uh, the hilltop first time in America and they're, they're seeing this coming at them. It might actually work. It may actually run away. Kill the music on that. <clears throat> Here we go. Look at this. 
just totally ridiculous. Russian troops coming over the, the mountain, just getting a view, coming into America, and then all of this starts walking towards them. And as they're dying to be like, they didn't use my pronouns. <laughs> Democrat controlled California looks like a war zone. Stolen and stripped cars are all over. Business owners frustrated over what they say is an illegal homeless encampment being used as a chop shop. And the thieves are reportedly abandoning the stripped out cars in the middle of the street blocking traffic. New at 6, KPI X5's Dahl Lynn on the growing calls for the city to step in. Oakland police instructed a tow truck company to remove nine cars on this one block. They just finished it a few hours ago, allowing traffic to once again get through. A public works supervisor tells me they'll clear all the remaining trash, hopefully by next week. This was what it looked like Friday morning, driving on Alameda Avenue near High Street. Drivers maneuvering around abandoned cars to get to roughly two dozen businesses Dang, in the that. area. Just a mess. I mean, that is, it's that's a, like out of a zombie movie, isn't it? Look at this. You can't even say third world country. I've lived in and in, in visited places that are considered third world countries. Uh, some are like this, but uh, no, this is, uh, that, that's right out of a zombie movie. Look at this. This is real life now. High Street. Drivers maneuvering around abandoned cars to get to roughly two dozen businesses in the area. Just a mess. It's a mess. The westbound lane was passable, but the eastbound lane was completely blocked by a handful of cars, most of them without wheels. These are cars that are literally sitting in the middle of the street. They're blocking the ability for cars to pass. Businesses say these cars have been here for at least four days, making it difficult for customers to get in and out. It's a safety hazard. It's negligence. There's no accountability from the city, and we need somebody to be accountable. Jennifer Yu Good and luck. her husband, Kevin Kim, own High Street Car Wash next to Alameda Avenue after their repeated calls. <laughs> Oakland police and a tow truck company came out Friday and towed the cars that were blocking traffic. But an officer says these cars will stay at least for now since they're not blocking traffic and the department doesn't have enough resources. It's extremely infuriating. An officer tells me car thieves use this illegal homeless encampment as a chop shop. Once they're done stripping the cars, they'll drag them out to Alameda Avenue to make room for more stolen cars in the encampment. Businesses say the city isn't doing enough to stop the crime and quality of life issues connected to the encampment and homeless people living up and down Alameda avenue there you go man it is a real shame what they're doing out there it really is but it's that outward you know real manifestation of that uh, even spiritual corruption that antichrist spirit that's growing speaking of antichrist spirit madonna shows off her new face this is from uh, two days ago that's really crazy i mean she's like 60 something years old right is it even her anymore? <laughs> is it? Uh, is it a clone body? And they transferred Madonna's consciousness into it, perhaps. I don't know. But yeah, there you go, sixty-something-year-old lady, and that face. I mean, the face—it's just that's crazy. It looks like you know, what a twenty-two-year-old, maybe. And I've seen bad, bad uh, plastic surgery. We all have. Seen a lot of body modification on these shows too, but that's almost too good, isn't it? It's kind of creepy. She's kind of creepy. Michigan man mowed down jogger with his car to kill woman and then had sex with the body. Yeah. Oof. A Michigan, you know, it's, I shared this because last week we had a story about a kid that, a, he was a kid, he was like 18 or 19, was hiding in his neighborhood watching people jog by and, uh, his plan was to get one of the male joggers, knock him over the head, kill him, and then uh, have sex with that body, if you guys remember that. So there's something here. There's another one. Van Buren County Sheriff's Office, a Michigan man allegedly struck a woman so that he could kill her to have sex with her body, according to the police. Colby Martin, 29, of White Pigeon, Michigan, drove his 2013 Ford F-150 truck into a jogger 
to deliberately hit a 64-year-old woman, according to authorities. The driver struck the jogger as, as she was near the Oak Shores campground on September 20th. He then moved the body to a wooded area where he allegedly committed sex acts, authorities said, according to the station. Martin led investigators to the site the next day. Detectives said Martin searched for pornography involving dead or unconscious women immediately after the victim was reported missing. Wow. All right. Investigators also found condoms in Martin's vehicle and in the trash can of his home, which reportedly had DNA gross of the suspect and victim reported that uh, the news reported that Martin had been charged with manslaughter with a motor vehicle concealment of death and failure to stop at the scene of an accident. It seems like there should be more. Anyway, there you go. Mandatory bicycle helmet law revoked in Seattle for racial equality. That's the headline. More of that nonsense. Here's another Ukrainian, Ukrainian point of view on what is happening from the 21st, it's from five days ago. A lot's happened since then, but let's see what this young lady has to say. So I'm from Ukraine and we've been in the news recently, as always, for all the wrong reasons. What I find staggering is how everyone seems to have an opinion on us and how the Ukrainian voices seem to be missing from the conversation. Because apparently it's only hashtag I stand with Ukraine unless you actually have to listen to Ukrainian people. Um, actually, if Putin invades, I'm gonna go to Ukraine personally and I'm gonna fight. Kevin, you're 16. You have never left Iowa. The only people you're fighting are your younger sisters. And you are terrified of changing your pizza order. You're not going anywhere. Shut up. Hello, I'm the Western media and I am telling you to evacuate immediately. Aren't you the same people who were mixing up Kazakhstan with Kyrgyzstan a couple of weeks ago? Why would I listen to you? Um, because we have consulted all the experts. Like that one guy who doesn't speak Ukrainian, that another guy who's never been to Ukraine, and that third guy who only writes papers on Russia and is probably paid by Russia. Are you listening to yourself? Um, we have just received the new information. You're getting attacked tomorrow. Three days ago, you said today. You remember things that happened three days ago? Magic. You know who could actually defeat Putin in like one day? The BTS fandom. <laughs> All right, there was that from a Ukrainian woman. But again, a lot has happened since. If you want to take over... Getting rid of alpha males, 55 seconds. From Max Spears. Here's a man that uh, died really mysterious circumstances. Uh, many of us did videos on it back then. Uh, they found him dead. He was a researcher um, into all the things we're into, really and more. And I don't know if there is more, we're into all of it. So he was into a lot of interesting subjects, uh, put a lot of interesting information out there, but they found him dead with uh, literally with black goo uh, coming out of his mouth is the story. Look that one up. Planet. Okay. If you want to completely take over a planet, the first thing that you have to do is you have to take out the alpha males or the strength of the strong males from the planet because the strong alpha males, protect the divine feminine through television and films how they are feminizing men more and more and more you'll see women dressed up I mean, men dressed up in female clothes oh, and the, the cane is a phallus or male energy the two circles on either side are to control the male energy this is not to empower the female in any way this is this is this is a trick to, to make it look like that it's empowering the female when in fact it is um, taking away this taking away the protection from the female the feminism movement that happened in the 60s was to um, destroy the family unit from the inside out Max Spears everybody Max Spears from 2016 Ottawa so mayor will use emergency powers to sell the truckers vehicles that's, that's kind of mean managed to get uh, today. Nasty. Well, they've done a remarkable job uh, both last night and today. As you pointed out, they've uh, got Wellington Street uh, cleaned up. Uh, most of the trucks have been towed away. And uh, uh, I now just got word that Mr. Johnny McDonald Parkway, most of the trucks are, are removed from that. And I don't know if that's true to the mayor. The end of the city as well. So they've made a lot of progress. They've been very measured in the response. It's a really tough assignment for police officers getting yelled at and spat upon. 
Right. But they have been uh, calm and cool and, and collective. Uh, and they're, we owe a, de a debt of gratitude to all those municipal forces that have come in from across Canada, disrupted our city, you've hurt our small business community. Uh, and this is costing a small fortune for the taxpayers of Ottawa. And that's one of the reasons why under the Emergency Act, I've asked our solicitor and our city manager, how can we keep the tow trucks and the campers and the vans and everything else that we've confiscated and sell those uh, pieces of equipment uh, to help recoup some of the costs that our taxpayers are absorbing. That's so, so that's nasty. one of the provisions of the Emergency Act. And we have been a beneficiary of the Emergency Act. As they debated on the Hill, I asked the, the members of Parliament to consider. Uh, it's helped us a lot on things like confiscating vehicles, not having to swear in peace officers to the RCMP. Uh, and so Bringing in those people with no name tags. The other things that have been very helpful over the course of this period, including you can't be under 18 and be in this, this rally. It's just unbelievable. You get copied. I'll stop there, but this is devilish what these people are trying to do. This is from the 21st, so uh, the Emergency Act has been dropped. I haven't heard anything new about this situation. When I do, I'll show you. Australia, New Zealand, this is another, another one of those showing uh, a lot of the victims of the, uh, the frequency-based weapons they were using out there. Took me straight back to a memory that I had. Being gay was no longer who I was. The supernatural moment this Hollywood designer met Jesus Christ. I was hoping to find a clip on here. Here we go. Here's some. Watch a little bit of this. I thought the whole purpose of my life, the meaning of my life, was finding true love in another human being and a guy and finding in success in my career. So at a very young age, I knew that I was attracted to the same sex. I had to keep it to myself. I dated, you know, girls and in elementary school, I went steady with girls in high school, I dated girls, but it was all a facade. After college, I ended up moving to LA to pursue acting and writing and, and kind of a creative, more of a creative field. I just came out to everyone. That's when I fully embraced homosexuality as my identity. After each relationship with a guy, and after it would end, I had total amnesia that it, how it all ended. And I would think, oh, the next guy is gonna be perfect. And the next guy is gonna be amazing. And of course, like two years later, it's over. You know, there's cheating, infidelity, and it's over. At this point in my life, I was very successful in my career as a set designer, production designer. I mean, I was doing covers for Vogue and for Harper's Bazaar, and I worked with a lot of pop stars like Katy Perry and Paris Hilton and, and Oprah, like everyone you can imagine. I worked with them. And I also started my own men's fashion line that was successful. Um, our clothes were in you know, LA, New York, Paris. I went to all the shows. I went to all the after parties. I was at this one after party in Paris and I remember just everyone was there from the fashion world. I think Kanye was there that year. And I was kind of looking out over the crowd. It just struck me so profoundly. I was like, is that all there is to life? Just going to parties for the rest of my life? Is that all, is this what it's all about? And I really started to panic that night. I was overwhelmed with a sense of emptiness got back to LA and got busy with work for about six months. I was at a coffee shop in Silver Lake with my best friend and he was gay too. And we noticed shockingly that there was a table next to us with Bibles on the table. This was the first time I had seen a Bible in public in Los Angeles ever. <laughs> and by that point in my life, I was, I was a practical atheist. Finally, I just turned around and I said, are you guys Christians? And they he just, they laid it out for me. They told me what they believe. They told me the gospel. So what does your church in Hollywood believe about homosexuality? And they were just like, well, you know, we believe it's a sin. And what's interesting about that is, number one, I, I appreciated how kind of frank they were and honest. 
And I just want to throw out real quick and see, here's a, a good example, a nice example of people from a church, from an organized church, whether it be non-denominational or whatever, doing the right thing, right? Doing good work, right? That's perfect. You know, the Lord put them there that day for a reason, the right people, you know? Honest, they invited me to church the following Sunday. And I, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to go to your church, but I'll think about it. And then the following Sunday, I wake up, and I'm like, I guess I'm just going to go to this church today. Uh -huh. The pastor comes out and he starts preaching on Romans chapter seven. Something strange started happening. Everything he was saying, every word he was saying, every sentence he was saying started to resonate as truth in my mind and my heart. And I didn't know why. I was on the edge of my seat, literally on the edge of my seat. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I had really heard the gospel and understood it. And before he left, he invited people to get prayed with on the side of the church. I go up to this guy, a stranger, and I say, I don't know what I believe, but I'm here. And he said, okay, let me pray for you. And he laid hands on me and prayed for me. It seemed really intense and long. And I just remember thinking, why does this straight dude love me so much? Because it seemed so loving what he was saying and praying. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit is just like, like floods me. And God has revealed himself to me in that moment. And he's like, you're now adopted into my kingdom. Welcome. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and I just like started bawling, hysterically bawling. In that moment, I knew in to the core of my being that being gay was no longer who I was. And, but I didn't care. Like I had just met Jesus Christ. <laughs> Some people might say that I'm just suppressing who I really am, but they don't get it because, you know, I lived that life for a really long time. And I, I marched in gay pride parades. I, I marched in gay marriage equality parades. I was super gay. I tried <laughs> that for 30 years. This is actually really who I am now. My hope is that people will realize how much more amazing it is to deny yourself and follow Christ rather than to just give in to sin now just to satisfy some Im immediate need. So it's not a happiness from the world. It's a joy that comes from Christ. With God, I feel this unconditional love from him that will never leave. Like he'll never leave or forsake me. I'm happy to leave that dead man behind because he's worth it beautiful beautiful the Love pandemic it. is shaking our economy world economic forum talking about a cyber attack with covid like characteristics this is uh, from january 2021 i'm sure i've shown you guys this before but they have it unlisted so if you want to find it see right here it's unlisted um, just type in a cyber attack with COVID like characteristics question mark and you'll find it. In other words, it's a uh, cyber polygon. Is that the, when humans be become World Economic Forum transhumanism when humans become cyborgs. Cyborg session. One of the major um, investors in this area is the military. So both. Uh, certainly in the UK and in the US and probably elsewhere, because these are technologies that will enhance or, you know, are, are certainly thought to enhance human cap capacities in ways that will also protect soldiers, um, but enable us to do much more than, than we can already. And so we've been talking to uh, military officers around the world. We're in the third wave of data collection, so we don't have any concrete findings to share at the moment. Um, but we've been talking to them about their neural implants. Um, you know, if they were to have, for example, a, a retinal implant that enhanced their sight capabilities or a cochlear implant that allowed them to hear, you know, across great distances. Um, what are the ethical issues that come up for them? And one issue that's really interesting is bodily integrity. So they want to know things like, you know, do I own my implant? Does my implant become part of me? What happens when I leave the military? Who pays for my implant? Does it get removed? 
does it get, do I get to keep it for life? Does it get upgraded? Who pays for that? Um, and so it reminds us in, in our preliminary thinking about this of issues of, of ownership over what you have in your body and the ways in which our bodies um, through the, this technology will extend um, to machinery, certainly, but also extend potentially to machines that exist outside the confines of our bodies. There are quite a few studies where they can monitor, you know, how you use your cell phone, your voice, your tone, and how you use your computers that reflect your mood swings mm -hmm. and that uh, they are really early signals of someone going to depressive phase. If in fact, when you begin to see a tremendous change in the way which your usual, from your usual pattern. So that already exists. And uh, I, would, I, I won't be surprised at all. This scales up to a much higher level mm -hmm. to be used as a way of monitoring and uh, so you can have early intervention. Oh, yeah. Definitely a part of the plan. That last clip I've got in a video. That's why I didn't want to show it here. Uh, voice to skull. They can do this and have been doing this for a long time on bit shoot. 13 minutes. We'll play a little bit. Do you believe that a technology exists wherein speech can be encoded and transmitted via microwaves so that it can be heard inside the human skull without the use of a receiver? I became totally immersed in hearing voices. Are you delusional? You could actually hear voices in your head. Uh, from microwave being the carrier band heating up the temporal lobes. Whenever I hear somebody talking to me about microwaves or stuff like that being zoomed into their head. You are not supposed to be violating people at the level that this is. I think even voice to skull technology should be outlawed. Do you, sir, believe that these dreadful allegations of babies being sacrificed are true. I absolutely believe it, without any doubt. San Diego, California resident Dela Kiki, born with a rare genetic disorder known as Noonan syndrome, was accused of ritually abusing children. Did you ever intentionally physically hurt any children? No, I did not. Have you ever tortured any children? No. Have you ever hurt or tortured or killed any animals? Mm -hmm. The satanic ritual abuse allegations, which were so widely sensationalized in the popular media. Not sure what this has to do with voice to skull. Abuse while he was stationed at the Presidio Army Base in San Francisco. Oh, it's the Michael Aquino connection. Francisco, but he was eventually cleared of all charges. I could not function at work, this new job that I had. And so I didn't pass probation at this new job and I was let go. And I became totally immersed in hearing voices. These people identified themselves as NASA Ames employees. They identified themselves as Livermore Lab. Paranoia is a defense mechanism to de handle with anger. Most people don't like to be angry. And particularly, many people like to deny the fact that they are angry. I'll stop there, but I just want to bring this one to your attention. It's... 15 minutes. It is interesting because a uh, voice to skull has been around for a long time and you'll see it in this little mini documentary here on bit shoot. I quote though on his uh, Joe Rogan show this uh, guest is explaining how the world economic forum is infiltrating governments around the world. We heard Klaus himself talking a bit about that. I quote though on his uh, you see it. Our teams are now embedded in governments around the world. That's actually what they wrote. Yeah. And the video is two minutes. I didn't play all of it. It's what he said. But what he's saying there sounds reasonable. Yeah. Figuring out on strategic ways to end the lockdown is. easily. No, Does that make the, sense? Not the end of lockdown. No, no, no. Well, no. didn't he say that? Yeah. Keep in mind, Tony Blair is the one who's been advocating for vaccine passports, digital identification through COVID, and all of these measures. But didn't they say that about ending the lockdowns and keeping businesses? Once those measures are in place. Right. So he's even in the UK, his stance has been, yeah, we're going to get out of it, but you have to have digital ID mm. and you have to have. So, so during the war, this is going to. And that's why, you know, we saw the commercial earlier for the digital ID from Canadian banks. They're putting it out there now. 
So while everyone's focused on the trucks and all this, and hey, man, we're winning, you know, we're winning a couple here. We're losing the mandates, things like this. It's like things are still moving forward. And that's exactly what this guy's talking about. Introduce the, t- the social credit score system. Right. So the, what, all of that came from your question, which is regardless of intention, how do people how do people do that infiltration from within? It's not just Twitter. So back to the psychological operations. It's also embedding people in government who are subscribed to this agenda. Yeah. And the agenda of Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum is the same as the agenda of Tony Blair in this regard. They call it on their own website. They call it the Great Reset. That's what they say themselves. Yeah, that's a bizarre thing to do to yeah. openly. Why do you think they openly discuss it that way? And openly, because the Great Reset has always been this gigantic conspiracy theory yeah, yeah. among the online folks. Yeah. Like, this is all part of the Great Reset. Well, yeah. when he wrote a fucking book called The Great Reset, you're yeah. like, hey, man, yeah. shouldn't you be hiding this? And, and and in 2017 at Harvard, he's saying, you know, we're going to basically all of these world leaders will penetrate their cabinets with our young global leaders. He's open. <sighs> he's open. Blair's open. During the Iraq war, Blair tried to bring in ID cards in Britain. He failed. Now he's back. And he's trying to bring in digital ID during COVID, right? So they're open about it. So this is going to be this never-ending process to slowly move the goalposts. Towards more and more authoritarianism. Checkpoint society. It's all there. They, you, they've how, told us this. We ha- People have to realize this, right? This is important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That veteran speaks the truth. No, no, show the love. They love you. Yes, they love you. I'm having a moment. There. You guys let them have a moment, please. You please just put the fucking cameras down for a bit. That's what's wrong with this fucking world. Everybody's got this fucking thing in their fucking hands. Shut. No. I fucking earned my right to see this shit. These people with your fucking phone, put them down. You don't shut up. I am not fucking done talking. You're in the right to talk, okay? You're in this. You didn't. All right, we had enough. He was he was tripping. Storm Eunice, church spire ripped off during ferocious gales before crashing to the ground. There it goes. And there's that. Uh, this is really cool. Hijraeli Dio, Dio, I'm not sure how you say that, uses artificial intelligence to capture what historical figures would look like if they were born modern people. Uh, there's only one at a time, okay. It's pretty wild. George Washington. There's more. Benjamin Franklin. Mona Lisa. Napoleon. They did the Statue of Liberty. It looks like that actress Penelope Cruz to me. Maybe a little Lady Gaga. Leonardo da Vinci. It's cool. Mozart. Looks like Daniel Radcliffe. And Beethoven. There's a couple more. Newton. Shakespeare, Van Gogh, Shakespeare's, <laughs> there's Shakespeare, there you go, found that on Tim Urban over on Twitter, 
something strange next to passenger plane from Mavi 777. It's another one of those uh, entities uh, that look like uh, the creatures from the Harry Potter movie. What do they call the corruptors or something like that? I, I never really watched a lot of that stuff. I think I saw the first probably couple movies. But yeah, check it out for yourself. I've done a few videos on this and I've shown other examples over the years as they come in of these, I believe they're entities, these creatures. Maybe not creature, maybe entity. You see the black tail behind it? It's like a mist. It's huge. Long, but it's got that black tail. It's hard to tell with the phone recording. It's a long, misty black tail behind it. There's more of these, yeah, ghost lights, perhaps. Yeah, look at them. Here's another one. It's one of those anomalies we've seen quite a bit here on the channel. If you're new and first time seeing it, it's easy to think these are spotlights. It's like a circus or something like that, but. No, man, these, these have been seen the last year and a half, maybe a couple years, all around the world, different locations, sometimes over trees and, you know, near mountains, sometimes over the ocean. There's a, they've been all over the place, sometimes in cities, sometimes over neighborhoods. But it's like they perform these, it's like these, sometimes it seems choreographed movements. And sometimes it just goes off the rails and they just fly all over the place. I don't know if there's audio on this, I guess not. But yeah, those of you who've been around the show for a while, you know we've seen these these guys before. This type. Wow, that's a big show too. Look at them. And as I've said, you know, maybe maybe that's going to be part of uh, the introduction of these things. Is that suddenly all around the world, we'll see this type of experience taking place up in the skies, and then maybe one lands and you know wherever Israel, maybe, probably not Washington D.C. It looks like they may be setting that up to uh, to uh, bring it down. If you know what I'm saying. In a uh, spectacular fashion. There you go, man. That's a couple good ones there from Mavi Seven Seven Seven. Tank. Um. Here's uh, the most popular president in American history. That's what we're told. Uh, this is what he said when a reporter asked if Putin will will be hitting America with uh, you know the nukes. Tank. Um, uh, Cecilia Ve Ve Vega, ABC. Sir, sanctions clearly have not been enough to deter Vladimir Putin to this point. What is going to stop him? How and when does this end? And do you see him trying to go beyond Ukraine? And a second question I'll just give to you now. This statement that he gave last night, will that the, West, the threat that he gave, the West will face consequences greater than any you have faced in history. Is he threatening a nuclear strike? I have no idea what he's threatening. I know what he has done number one. And number two, no one expected the sanctions to prevent anything from happening. It has to show this is going to take time and we have to show resolve so he knows what's coming 
And so the people of Russia know what he's brought on them. That's what this is all about. This is going to take time. It's not going to occur. He's going to say, oh, my God, these sanctions are coming. I'm going to stand down. He's going to test the resolve of the West to see if we stay together. And we will. We will. And it will impose significant costs on him. Hmm. As you can see, the sanctions have done nothing. Right. So I think that's uh, that one's potion related. This is the People's Convoy heads out from California to D.C. It goes on and on, but as you can see, it goes for miles and miles and miles. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Maybe that's why uh, they've been setting the White House up for, uh, you know, I believe for an event. Maybe that'll be the event. Maybe once all the truckers are there, all of a sudden the White House goes. Pfft. I'm just saying, maybe you got to think like the way these people think sometimes. Figure it out. You know, the uh, truckers get there, and then it's like, that would just be like something you could see on the news, but playing everywhere all the time. It's like, look what the truckers have done. You know, White House. I'm just saying. Wouldn't put it past them, right? Maybe that's why. This is what it's been all about, guys. This is why they did the convoy, the emergency act, and all the new financial laws. It's all about a new digital ID to replace the vaccine passport system so they can install the social credit score and track every single thing you do and have to approve every single transaction you do. This is the new tyranny they are about to roll out, and this is what this has been all about since day one. You want to see? It's right here. I'll show you straight from the horse's mouth. Keep watching. Canada is on the cusp of a... Ready? Here we go. ...revolutionary innovation that will transform the way Canadians authenticate themselves online and protect their identity. Digital ID. All of us are living in a digital world, but we're tethered to an analog model of how we identify ourselves. Memorizing countless online passwords, carrying government-issued licenses, plastic cards, and more. Digital ID is a way for Canadians to identify themselves to government, businesses, and each other electronically with ease and rock-solid security, without the need to present physical documents. One interconnected network. A federated digital ID ecosystem developed in collaboration with Canada's best and brightest talent from our banks, telecommunication companies, law enforcement, and government. It would have the power and security to store every Canadian's electronic identity and attributes. Isn't that great? And it would unlock countless opportunities for Canadians to verify who they are safely, quickly, and securely, while only revealing the information necessary for each transaction. Ooh. A fast, easy, and secure way to bank, sign up for government services, renew driver's licenses or health cards, shop, travel, and more like social credit Canada's banks are perfectly situated to help lead the creation of a federated digital id system between government and the private sector the world economic forum agrees that banks and financial institutions should lead the path forward for digital id of course the world banks economic forum does and trusted justin trudeau and more than half the cabinet that we have and what did we get a 54 percent of the cabinet voting for the emergency act after Klaus Schwab says he has more than 50% of the cabinet in his pocket. And here it is, the digital ID, the precursor to the Chinese social credit score, coming directly to you from the World Economic Forum. But don't worry, guys. This is all for your safety. Hmm. BlackRock, the company that owns the world. There's a good chance you've never heard of BlackRock. Founded in only 1988, in less than 30 years, this American financial firm would grow to become the company that owns the world, managing assets worth $6.3 trillion. These are assets that belong to their clients, mainly the pension funds of ordinary people, teachers, police officers, nurses, and many more. And that's just the beginning. BlackRock has also developed a software platform called Aladdin, 
algorithms to perform risk analysis for its clients. It receives sensitive data from banks, insurance companies, and other important institutions. Through Aladdin, BlackRock has insights about the management of financial assets worth another $20 trillion. BlackRock also has shares and voting rights in many of the biggest European companies, in sectors such as energy, oil and gas, transportation, food, and of course, finance. The company holds public debt in the form of bonds and has real estate interests. And still, there's more. Our rock, you see, wears many hats. Aside from being an investor, it is also an auditor and an advisor. Governments and central banks invite a BlackRock subsidiary called BlackRock Solutions to audit them and to provide advice about the management and rescue of banks. Yet at the same time, BlackRock is often a major shareholder in these same banks. In other words, the company often sits on both sides of the table. BlackRock Solutions gets privileged access to highly sensitive information, information that could be valuable to BlackRock itself. Does this constitute a conflict of interest? No, says BlackRock, which claims that the company has established Chinese walls between its different subsidiaries. In January 2018, BlackRock's founder and chairman, Larry Fink, sent a letter to all of the CEOs of the companies BlackRock has invested in, asking them to do more than deliver financial performance and make a positive contribution to society. So BlackRock not only owns the world, it also wants to save it? Interesting, eh? Annalyn McCord. Dear President Vladimir Putin, I'm so sorry that I was not your mother. Oh, this is a this is a, a Hollywood actress, and this is her message to Putin. This is from the 24th, and uh, it's nauseating. But it can, you know, most of these people are uh, are hollowed out, uh, narcissistic uh, creatures. Many of them are. And here's an example. Dear President Vladimir Putin. I'm so sorry that I was not your mother. If I was your mother, you would have been so loved, held in the arms of joyous light. Never would the stories plight the world unfurled before our eyes, a pure demise of nations sitting peaceful under a night sky. If I was your mother, the world would have been warm, so much laughter and joy and nothing would harm. I can't imagine the stain, the soul stealing pain that the little boy you must have seen and believed and the formulation of thought quickly taught that you lived in a cruel, unjust world. Is this why you now decide no one will get the best of you? Is this why you do not hide nor away shy from taking back the world? It was it because so early in life, all that strife wrapped your little body with fear. If I was your mother, if the, the world was cold, I'd have died to make you warm. I'd have died to protect you from the unjust, the violence, the terror, the uncertainty. I would have died to give you life. Oh dear, Mr. President Putin, if only I'd been your mother. Perhaps I don't want to, I can't watch anymore, but I do think we should get this to President Putin's stat. Maybe it'll change the course of things. How to throw out the globalist Hello. puppets from local governments. I just wanted to hop on here and discuss some crazy stuff that's happening in our lovely state of California. Um, this should pique the interest of not only California residents, but everyone, because I'm often told, oh, get out of California, move to a red state. But if we don't take care of the issues that are happening at a local level in our own states right now, before this spirals out of control, then nowhere will be safe. And even your red states will be infiltrated by this eventually. So um, I would love for everyone to listen, even if you aren't a California resident, because this could likely come to a city near you, if not your own. Um, and if you care at all about preserving and protecting the constitution, then please get involved, share this and um, let people know what's happening because this could very well come to your own town and we need to stop this before it gets any further out of control. All right, so I took some notes. Um, there's quite a bit of information here, so I wanna make sure I relay it properly and give you the accurate uh, update of everything that's going on here. This primarily pertains to my city of Huntington Beach, um, but even if you're anywhere in Orange County, you should listen to this because uh, these people are infiltrating your cities too. So what's going on here in Huntington Beach is the city council members are being installed into office and are overtaking the grassroots votes. 
There are five city council members that we are voting to recall. They have been installed through union funding and our special interest candidates who are not a res representation of we the people. So we're voting to have them recalled. We need to collect signatures to get them out and get people in at a grassroots level that we vote for and we want representing us. One of the five people you should take special note of is the mayor of Huntington Beach, Kim Carr, who secured her seat by taking union and chamber of commerce money. And she won her first ever race this way. She's never ran for anything before. And now all of a sudden she comes out of nowhere and wins right off the bat. That just doesn't happen. That should immediately raise red flags for you. She's also the beneficiary of vote and ballot harvesting where they are targeting young people who don't typically vote, specifically 18 to 25 year olds to drive up the numbers and secure their seats that way as well. Now, we all know the left is crooked and will stop at nothing to implement their evil communist agenda. However, this next bit of information I found particularly alarming, and this is exactly why everyone needs to be aware of what's going on and share this, because this is why it can happen in your city. So most of these people that are running Huntington Beach are graduates of a training program called Emerge California. Now, Emerge California is a seven month radical training program started by none other than Kamala Harris. Merge California trains women to become political operatives. There are 4,000 women that have been trained thus far and 700 of them are currently in office. Uh, two of our city council members, Kim Carr and Natalie Moser are graduates of Emerge California and ironically refuse to acknowledge publicly that they have been through this training. Um, this is also of concern to other Orange County residents because the mayor of Irvine, uh, two city council members in Costa Mesa and one in Tustin are graduates of this program as well. Emerge California graduates are largely responsible for the destruction of our state. And just to put things into perspective for you, other graduates of the program include our lieutenant governor, who's actually next in line if Newsom were to step down, in addition to the mayor of both San Francisco and Oakland. And we know how well those cities are being run. So just some food for thought. Something else to be aware of regarding these far left council members that are infiltrating our cities is that they are working to implement a sustainability plan, which is basically code for social engineering. They want to get rid of single family zoning, which means they want to uh, pay developers to buy the house next to yours and from there build low income housing. They're working against the public interest under the guise of sustainability and environmentalism to profit off of you and stay in office. That's right. They are redistributing our tax dollars to get their votes and uh, continue and see through their evil communist agenda. Now, it is important to note, and I'm sure it comes as no surprise whatsoever, that the media colludes with politicians. And this all ties back into the supposed climate crisis, which I'm sure you've heard your local experts warn you of for quite some time now. And this is very interesting because our local expert just so happens to be Kathleen Tresder, who is yet another graduate of Emerge California. Isn't that interesting? Um, also important to note that she is currently a candidate of Irvine City Council for 22. So watch out for that one, Irvine. Uh, this should be highly concerning to everyone because unless you liked the COVID lockdowns and the extreme restrictions that were put in place during the entirety of the last two years, uh, then you should be extremely alarmed for what is to come for the upcoming climate crisis. Now, this is just my personal thought process, um, but I believe that the insane lockdown measures that were taken during COVID were priming us for what's to come. These people running our city are going to use climate change as a way to continuously implement these insane tyrannical measures that we saw during the pandemic. And they will use this endlessly to drag out uh, locking us down and getting us used to becoming dependent on the government. So unless we stop this dead in its tracks right now, that will be our inevitable future. This is all a result of unions taking over our towns. Unions are a political entity that are completely separate from the good men and women who are serving or want to serve on a grassroots level. And they are taking our tax dollars and weaponizing them against us to further their communist agenda and better their own individual lives. So it is absolutely crucial that we all get involved and we save our cities so we can prevent these completely crazy left-wing radicals from overrunning them. 
Alrighty, so just to recap, if you are in Huntington Beach, we are recalling five city council members and we are collecting signatures until the 7th of February. So um, if you would like to get involved, if you are in the area, please visit savesurfcity.org where you can find an entire list of all of the locations in which you can sign the petition. Um, there's also a group on Facebook called Huntington Beach Community Forum where you can get a lot of excellent info. So I highly encourage you to join that as well. Um, if you're not in Huntington Beach, then you should still get involved. You should still spread the word and um, just make sure you're familiarizing yourselves with the council members in your own city because this could be happening to you and you might not even know. So get involved, do your part. Got it. It's a uh, cringe compilation, but this has to do with the potion. So that'll be on my uncensored show. Get your ass in my way. Get Says your these ass people might not way. be zombies, but they're close enough. Let's check this out. Get your ass out of my way. <clears throat> I am. Get the out of me. Oh, yeah, now I know why I was going to show this. Um, I may have shown this in the past. This uh, it, I know it's a re-upload because I've seen this one. But this is straight out of a, a horror movie. It really is. I mean, this escalates quickly. Um, apparently, it's a man with his two daughters in the car. One of them's filming all this, and you'll hear from them in a second. It says, and a clip from I Am Legend. <clears throat> but and oh, the I am legend has to be at the end. But this right here has happened. Let's see. Yeah, they put the I am legend thing at the very end. But anyway, here you go. Check this out. They're total strangers. Get your ass out of my way. Says, Get your ass out of my way. Get your ass out of my way. I am. The person out there's thinks that this is their car. Get the f out for me. Man, get out the way, man. That's not one what. Max, call. Max, call. Just all these people come out of nowhere and start surrounding him and his kids. Guys saying, dude, that's my car. Come on. Walmart on Sprague. Yeah, I'm at the, oh actually at the intersection of Sprague and uh, Lock Your Door. Sprague, you got the one. Yeah. What is he doing? This is her car. This is not her car. This is not her car. Get out of the car. This is not her car. This is not her car. That's people bashing their vehicle. Dad. Hello? Hey. Oh, Dad. 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 Suddenly they're surrounded. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh 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 my god. Dad. Dad. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Hitting it with bikes. They're hitting his car with bikes. I can't see anything. They're using bikes to hit my car. They're trying to open my doors. I got two kids in the car with me. <laughs> my name is Lee. Lee Allen. I drove off because they're hitting my car and I feel threatened for my life. They said my, oh my god! My car, my oh my car. god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yes, I am. I'm headed east on spray. I mean, west on spray towards the yeah, McDonald's. Someone just riding on his hood. Oh my god! No! 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 Dad! Oh my god! Oh my god! The dad! The door! Daddy's in the motorcycle. Yes, 
Back, Patty's behind you. There you go. Here's the I am legend clip. But anyway, we get it. I understand. Wars and rumors of wars on Stu Peter's show. Okay, so P, we're not backed by big pharma or globalist backed corporate conglomerates. And so we recognize the media as the real enemy of the people, the arbiters of lies, the propaganda arm for the global pedophilia cabal <coughs> responsible for carrying out psychological and brainwashing operations on the American populace for decades. The CIA and the Clintons, Bush, Obama, they've been tearing out the same ops, practicing election theft in Belarus and Bill Grade and Ukraine for over 20 years. And they've now carried out that same op here in the United States. Jaron Jackson is a self-taught biblical scholar who's been dissecting this situation on his Telegram channel. And he joins us now. Jaron, thanks a lot for being here. The Bible says in the end times, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, unprecedented deception. What's your interpretation of how the events are unfolding now? Yeah, I think we live in a sinful world. And I think that Jesus Christ is king. Uh, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 that we don't wage war according to the flesh. We wage war and tear down strongholds, people's minds, the, the prisons people have in their minds. And we do that by making all thoughts captive to Christ. Uh, one thing I, I frequently say is this enemy has designed uh, the war to invade our minds through our eyes and our ears. And the competition, the battlefield is actually in the mind. I'm not saying that things uh, are, aren't actually happening in Ukraine. I believe that real people are actually dying. I believe that bombs are actually exploding. I believe that real things are actually happening. But that I also take take fact of the fact that people like Nancy Pelosi and George Bush and Joe Biden and Eric Swalwell, they're all on the same page as far as condemning Russia. Well, I don't think any of them know Jesus. I don't think any of them actually love America. I don't think any of them actually have America's best interests in mind. So whenever they say those things, I automatically ask, them, why are they all on the same page also readily? And so from my perspective, and, and you know, we were talking about this earlier, um, I, I'm a guy that goes back to first principles instead of first projections. And by that, I mean, it's just real simple. From a political perspective, any American military involvement should be engaged and initiated by the Constitution. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11, Congress has the power to declare war. We haven't declared war in this country since 1942. So everything since then has been a political, psychological type of uh, shaping operation. So that's where I go. And all the people who will go to the Constitution are the people who are actually trying to talk to you about the truth. People who already just assume that military involvement and military action against Russia is justified morally and, you know, secure, you know, necessary from a security perspective, they're trying to lie to you. And that's where I think people like yourself who aren't owned by other people, you can actually say things that are true and you're not on the same sheet of music. And that's why I, I think it's important. Second Corinthians 10, we make all thoughts captive to Christ. That means all thoughts. That means whenever we think about war or politics or anything else, we bring it to the scriptures. Uh, and I think if you do that, you will guard yourself against the deception that's going around. I mean, there's truths out there, but the one rock of truth is the gospel. I mean, we can always count on the gospel, the word of God being absolute truth. You mentioned Ezekiel 38 the other day in your Telegram channel, and you related it to what's happening currently in the region over there, Russia and Ukraine, Israel. Take us through that. Yeah. So, I mean, again, Ezekiel 38 is an Old Testament prophecy. Ezekiel is an Old Testament prophet talking about things that are to come uh, without getting all into everything. Ezekiel 38 is uh, popularly uh, known as the War of Gog and Magog. And in that chapter, uh, Ezekiel, prophet of God, being God inspired, is telling who is going to go at war with Israel? Uh, and there's a lot of people that like to look at current day events and wedge them into the scriptures. Uh, I am a guy that likes to have the Bible tell me what to think, and then I'll turn around and look at the world from that perspective. Uh, but, you know, in short, the war of Gog and Magog is generally what people believe is, is led by an enemy to the north, you know, Gog, Russia, in, in many people's interpretations, and it's against Israel. And so as things are moving up and as things are escalating, it's important to kind of see where things stack up. And I'll, the only thing I'll say here is that from a military perspective, the countries that I interpret and I look at 
as those countries in Ezekiel 38. They're now military aligned for the first time in, hit, in human history. Russia has never been on the same side as Syria while being on the same side as Iran, while being on the same side as Turkey, while being on the same side as Ethiopia and Morocco and other countries like that. Like it's, it's never aligned, but now it is. And so is this that war? I don't think so, because Israel isn't the target yet. Um, but at, at the same time, uh, when people speak about the Bible and prophecies like that, it has an element of sensationalism to it which is why I get back to make all thoughts captive to Christ. And ultimately, like you said, the gospel is uh, God's power to save. That's how I make sense of the world. Geopolitically speaking, and from you know just my observation here, looking at Ukraine, and again, up until just about a year ago, I was a bounty hunter who thought Russia was the bad guy and that Putin was evil because the media told me that. Uh, and that's what I believed to be true because, of course, Fox News was the arbiter of truth and facts. And what they report, we decide, and they are fair and balanced. We now fair know that as completely a, a horse hog of a lie. I mean, it's for lack of better words. Um, knowing that the CIA has been practicing these ops and carrying out election thefts in Belarus and Belgrade and Ukraine, knowing that they've been selecting leaderships there, this has been the testing ground and the breeding ground for psychological operations, knowing that this has been the honeypot for the Bidens and for the Clintons and Obamas. They gave $10 million to the Clinton Foundation, not because they believe in the cause and the principles of the Clinton Foundation. Obviously, they didn't think the Clintons were done politically uh, and fully expected Hillary to be elected in 2016 until the American populace surprised everybody and overwhelmingly elected one of their own, a person who puts America first. Is this an America first principle to get involved in this confrontation between Russia and Ukraine? And could it be possible that Putin is actually carrying out an attack on the deep state in Ukraine? Yeah, those are that's that there's a lot that I can't prove. Uh, I will validate that Norm Eisen wrote a book called The Playbook, literally the playbook that the CIA has deployed all across Eastern Europe to get Eastern Europe politically aligned with the United States. This is called a color revolution, and Ukraine is certainly one of those countries that the CIA was deeply involved in. So I have no doubt that the American deep state, the military industrial complex, the Biden Crime Family Foundation, uh, all these other godless commies, I have no doubt that they're uh, heavily involved, invested, and uh, and tied intimately to, to Ukraine. It makes sense. Uh, if you I'll go ahead and stop there. I wouldn't need to play the whole thing, but you can find it over on BitChute. If you're interested on Kim Buster channel. Global homo cabal desperate to kill masculinity. Let's watch some of this. Go open a newspaper or turn on CNN and you'll hear endless babble about so-called toxic masculinity as a root of problems in America. It's a lie. America doesn't have toxic masculinity. As a matter of fact, it has less masculinity than ever. Seriously. Look around. Does it seem like we're overflowing with real men? Of course not. Millions of men are secluded in their parents' basements. Right now, those men and millions more who live on their own prefer to just pass their time playing video games and masturbating. They're fat and they're out of shape. They're educational dropouts. They don't work steady jobs. They don't have many skills. They don't aspire to do or be anything great. They aren't self-sufficient. They don't support families. A lot of them don't even want families. None of this is masculine. It's a freakish extended childhood. Tristan Starter is the founder of the Order of Social Antiquity. Everything about OSA is about reviving the superior traditions and practices of the past. That means real Christianity. It means real families. It means dressing well and thinking right. It means picking up real skills so that you can be a real man and not just an overgrown boy. Tristan Sarter joins us now. I could not agree with you more uh, on your take on this. Oh, well, well thank you. Yeah, no, we, uh, we started it because, you know, me and it is, the Order of Social Antiquity right now is a coalition of tailors, architects, people around my age, maybe a little bit older, a few of them, that really love these traditional things that see the true beauty in these in the traditional craftsmanship that built, you know, this country that built what we all see as beautiful. Even people on the left will all agree that, you know, 1890s to post World War II was the most beautiful time in America. Everyone wants that kind of beauty, that kind of aesthetics. But we all started kind of asking each other, okay, why was that era particularly beautiful? What was the mindset of the people at that time compared to now? And I don't think you could be anything other than a traditional conservative to really understand that. 
But we really started looking at, okay, we all know why, but okay, how do we save it? How do we motivate people? How do we act as a living example of this traditional beauty, of these traditional values? And how do we really work to revive it in a meaningful way? And so how do you do that? Well, there's, there's a lot of opportunities through, you know, we've looked at opera as a, sorry, there, uh, you know, options with policy, possibly creating tax motivations and finding people to push tax motivations to create legal definitions of oh, antique, vintage, you know, because there are things like that for some cars in some states, things like that, tax exemptions, and to motivate retailers not only to push their, you know, styles in a more classical way and motivate them to go in that direction. But a lot of it is really just through getting a voice out there and, and letting people know that you can dress more old fashioned, you can look more old fashioned, you can live more old fashioned, and it's not some just rare novelty. You see at a museum or something a like that. A lot of that. things there are, are real ways. like that. I mean, we see styles that come back and then they go away. We have Zubas, for crying out loud, came back. I'm not <laughs> saying that that is uh, a sign of any masculinity by any sense of the imagination, but bell bottoms came back. I mean, fedoras, a lot of people wearing fedoras, people that are Yankees and Northeasterners are wearing cowboy boots because they want to appear to be more masculine. So we do see some of that happening in small pockets around the country. Did some of that help to inspire you? It is nice to see some things. One trend I am actually pretty keen on right now is the band collar shirts and the chore jackets that have become very popular, even with like H&M and things like that, as those were very common working class garments of the late 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah, I mean, the so way it is cool to see those little those little trends. So I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but the way that you dress is somewhat less important than obviously the way that you behave. But I think that one inspires the other. You see this with football teams, especially at the youth level or hockey teams or any sport for that matter. You feel good when you look good, right? And if you feel good because you look good, you perform better. These are just natural things with the human psychology. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and that's one of the reasons I'm a huge proponent of young men getting dressed up in the mornings. It gives your day a sense of purpose, especially for young guys who may. I'm going to stop there. I don't want to play the whole clip, but you can see the whole thing on Kim Buster on BitChute. Snake, this is the rest of the footage, or this is another angle of these, uh, some of the trucker people going after this uh, news crew. It's pretty hardcore. Check this out. Can't blame them. Hey, you want me to carry the sticks? Disgusting, filthy human being. Disgusting, filthy human being. You're a filthy human being. You're disgusting. This guy, he got two dollars. I don't get paid by two dollars. Not a fan of the news. Can't that the devil is on. Why I stopped using law of attraction from a Christian perspective. From new age to Jesus. I wanted to share that. If you guys want to check that out sometime. She's got it marked down here. There you go. On a Sophia Pruitt channel. What whoa. See, look at that, man. Live censorship. It's on BitChute. Page not found. 
This is a compilation here of uh, people going crazy. Why not? We get it. Um, I see that as just a, a populace prepared for invasion, <laughs> programmed and prepped for invasion. Ethan Crumbly, school shooting suspect, said he asked his parents to get him professional help, but they laughed or said, suck it up. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. So I can find a clip. All right. If you want to check that out, it's over on M or CNN. Gross. I didn't realize it was CNN. Dad who killed TikTok daughter's stalker blamed for selling his daughter's selfies to the teen prior to the incident. It's another crazy crime headline. Amanda Bynes files to end conservatorship. She believes her condition is improved says lawyer this poor thing i've done some videos on her other people have i know throughout the years uh where it seems that she's very much a um a victim of mk ultra and that's not a stretch once you kind of look into it but yeah but she's under one of those conservatorships as well she kind of you know lost her mind many years ago seeing the the programming it seemed went went wrong plant-based Pet food company offering pet owners over $6,000 to smell dog poop for two months. Oof. It's from uh, People. People.com. See now. He's He's already already grabbed my 30-year-old Ariel Lindsay says she and her friends were on their way to dinner when it happened in the lobby of the Palazzo Hotel. He walks by me and the second like I pass him, I felt his hand go up the back of my skirt. She confronted the creep. Don't touch me. Get the out of here. That's all I want to play because that's inside edition. They'll definitely uh, try to claim that. There you go. Looks like the creep got caught. Ukraine's Tiananmen Square moment. Brave man tries to stop Putin's invaders from entering Kiev. <laughs> oh, 
Ай, какие я красавцы! Yeah, he's getting right out there, isn't he? Ukrainian man gets caught in a uh, shootout between Russian tank and Ukrainian military forces. <clears throat> Сука, поехал же, блядь. Ой, блядь. Все, нахуй, прячусь, блядь. Ху, нахуй, пизда. But what's really scary about it is that it's just a, out in that area, it's just like a suburban area. There's little shops, there's neighborhoods. You just imagine that happening. It's hard to see it in your head, but that happening in America. It's a similar layout may not look exactly the same, but same kind of idea, right? Video shows Russian troops abandoning their posts, leaving heavily armored vehicles posted yesterday. Он дивись, Олег, Олег Васильевич. Пораноска, блядь. Тож босяка даже побіг он, блядь. Один, блядь, вообще без обуви. А це що таке? Шапка, блядь. Шапки. All their gear. Big vehicles. Wow, how'd you like to have one of those? Uh, thanks, Russia. This is cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cringy and and farta chick makes an arse of herself during police press conference. It says. Last night, twenty white supremacists oh. went in and fetched. We're getting fetched from all these white supremacists. Twenty yes, minutes for they started shooting. Y'all on August twenty second. How many cops were off on August twenty second? How many cops were off? Letting them shoot at us in the street. I want to know if this police officer cares. Andy, no. We are not hey, going to let them capture the narrative and lie. We have the right 
Good boy, Aunt Farta, always up to something bad. Young woman decides to halt hormone therapy, wants to stay a female and not transition. TikTok calls her transphobic in a clown world, yes. I was going to start testosterone today. I was going to start transitioning into being a male. But I had a major epiphany the other day, and I came to the realization that I was not transgender. Might be mind-blowing. Yeah, nitpicker 18. I'm not a guy. I devoted so many years into trying to convince myself that I was a male. But I realized that I wasn't. Never thought that this day would come. Hi, guys. I'm Maya. I'm a cisgender female. Well, I guess we don't get to see the... Uh the mean tweets or whatever, but I wouldn't be surprised. It says World War Three has begun. Battlefield Ukraine. Exclusive comp compilation of Russian attacks. I don't know how much of this I could play. Let me see how long it is. <clears throat> it's eight minutes. But uh, you can find this on Vidmax. You want to? And this was uploaded two days ago, so there'll be even more footage out now, I'm sure. But if you want to look into this, because. There is some kind of a uh, brutal, violent type footage out there online from this. There, and some of it might be in here, so I probably don't want to take my chances. But uh, you can find that too. You can actually find videos of bodies and stuff out there. So I wasn't looking for that, but Vidmax, you know, you'll find that stuff. And on a bit shoot too. Another documentary I wanted to make you aware of: the Crucifixion of Russia, Bolshevik documentary. It's on Daniel Walker backup. Um, yeah, this will blow your mind. Check this out. Crucifixion of Russia, Bolshevik documentary. And you hear people talk about the Bolsheviks kind of compared to what happened here in America most recently. And you'll see why when you check this out. So watch it while you can, I'd say. It's been up since January 2021. That's good. Back here, one gas. California residents outraged over gas prices. And this is um, interesting. It's the young generation's uh, you know, first experience with serious inflation. Back here, one gas station in Beverly Grove is charging more than six bucks a gallon for all grades. I just think that we're on the verge of uh, a financial collapse potentially. And um, I think that the, the worse it gets with Russia, that the more prices are going to go up, you know, and uh, it's not looking too good. I've never seen a $6 price point in my life, so that's definitely super interesting and not the best way. <laughs> yeah, you say that again. There's a meme right there for you. You know, and uh, it's not looking too good. I've never seen a $6 price point in my life, so that's definitely super interesting and not the best way. <laughs> yep, it's a, it's a perfect meme. Ooh, anonymous, anonymous message to Vladimir Putin. Are you scared yet? I'll get something else. Let me see if I can find it. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'll find it here in a bit. Anyway. <clears throat> Greetings Russian President Vladimir Putin, we have been patently waiting for you to respond to our most recent request, but we find ourselves growing impatient of your foot dragging. Unfortunately it seems you have made the option to ignore our presence and therefore we have decided to dedicate an operation specifically for you, a present of sorts. Do you perhaps remember the time the collective defaced Roskomordza's website in 2018, Mr. Putin? 
Do you remember when you lost to Afghanistan? A database belonging to the Ministry of Defense website was leaked by the anonymous collective. This database contained email addresses and passwords. This information was released on Twitter and it is now public information. Your recent attempt to threaten Finland and Sweden is shameful. You threaten to invade those countries if they join NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. We took down the websites of the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service, Kremlin, Russia Today and many other Russian government-associated websites. Vladimir Putin, is it a coincidence that Anonymous thinks not? We plan to expose what has been hidden for years, with the powers of Anonymous bearing down on you and your corrupt cronies. It's only a matter of time until we uncover the dirt you've been trying to hide from the community you lied your way into leading. From the depths of your closet, no skeleton will be left unturned. We are now asking for you to restore the rights of the Ukrainian people, and resign as an elected official. You have failed to protect those in vulnerable living conditions, you have failed your civic and moral duties as a public official, and you have failed those you purport to govern in your continual lapse of honesty. This is a call out to all other anonymous. It's time to put Vladimir Putin's proverbial money where his mouth is. Do your research to dig, and leave no stone unturned. Vladimir Putin, we provided you with ample time to remedy our grievances and provided a bevy of options, but you have decided to create a much larger battle. We will never forgive the lies, and although you may have, we will never forget the lives that have been lost under your regime. It is too late to expect us. Oh boy. Well, let's not forget. Maybe we can still find it <clears throat> here. Um... Anyway, the guy, <clears throat> I showed you guys the clip before, but the guy that hacked the uh, truckers was also one of the founders of Anonymous. And of course, you can't find the clip here anywhere on this website, right? I showed you guys last week, though. All right, I tried. It's not going to happen here. Mr. Kenny is not a scientist. Founder of the Weather Channel says climate change is not real. Live on CNN interview from a long time ago, many years ago. I am. He's the CEO of the Weather Channel now. I was the founder of the Weather Channel, not the co-founder. And I'm glad you did because I am addicted to the Weather Channel. I watch a lot I'm of cable news. Now. Hold on just well, a minute. I'm not done. And CNN has taken a very strong position on global warming that is that it is a consensus well there is no consensus in science science isn't a vote science is about facts and if you get down to the hard cold facts uh, there's no question about it climate change is not happening there is no significant man-made global warming now there hasn't been any in the past and there's no reason to expect any in the future there's a whole lot of baloney and yes it is has, it has become a big political point of the Democratic Party and part of their platform, and I regret it's become political instead of scientific, but the science is on my side. I don't think we're going to come to a conclusion about the topic right here. What I do wonder, well, I though, is when not, you see... I know you wouldn't the... allow it to happen on CNN, but I'm happy well, that we, I got on the air and got a chance to talk to your, uh, to your viewers. Hello, everybody. What there I is do, no global warming. What I do wonder is when you see the government, <laughs> when you see NASA, when you see other institutions say that 97% of climate scientists agree, do you think they're making it up? I, I, what I don't understand is how you well, square that. Well, that's a manipulated that. figure, and let me explain it to you. Uh, the the uh, government puts out about $2.5 billion directly for climate research every year. It only gives that money to scientists who will produce scientific results that support the global warming hypothesis of the Democrat Party of position. So they don't have any choice. If you're going to get the money, you've got to support their position. Therefore, 97% of the scientific reports published support global warming. 
Why? Because those are the ones the government pays for, and that's where the money is. It's real simple. But that doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't make it true. That only makes it bought and paid for. The money goes in circles. I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to try to refute well, you on Well, that's the, facts. the truth. So I'll simply so say that the vast majority... Please stand back from this, from this issue and let the two sides be on the air. Mm-hmm. Love it. Good stuff, huh? Now, this is really wild. Um, this right here is the president of Ukraine. It says, so you put a Ukrainian actor in charge of ruining your country. What could go wrong? Yeah, the guy is like literally an actor before. Check this out. Vasily Petrovich Golobarotka? No. Доброе утро, господин президент. In Ukraine, the line between fact and fiction. How are you? Serious day, guys. How are the conditions? Class? Yes. Yes. Це не фейк, і я дуже серйозно відношусь до нашої країни і до життя кожної людини. І от зіс, розумієш? Тепер вони заставляють дітей будки вашим. Stars in hit TV shows a teacher who's elected president after a rant about Ukraine's corrupt political system goes viral. Із двох пірацем вибираємо менше. І так 20 кадрів підряд. Ти знаєш, що? Да, при рішенні цього питання буде дочитуватися специфіка Уважаемые журналисты, я прошу прощения, я не готов к этой пресс-конференции. Как совместить физкультуру, спорт, если хотите, изучение украинского мода? Первая причина, конечно же, они хотели бы видеть в президентах такого человека, как Василий Голобородько, с такими, самое главное, моральными ценностями. А второе, конечно же, это ответ всему политическому истеблишменту. Люди хотят что-то новое. А я тут ни при чем. Перестаньте. Мы же все понимаем, что это твой человек. Нет, я был уверен, что Голобородько – это твой человек. Ясно. Если не твой, не мой, значит, это человек Рустема Ашотовича. Господа, клянусь. Я не имею uh, колоборотика никакого. Много всего нового научиться. So of course it said on TV he's a guy that goes against the elite, but in real life it seems to be he's uh, in their pocket. It says. Посмотри, как пишет собака. There he is. There's the president. Я обещаю вам пить в президенты Украины и одразу выконую. Я иду в президенты Украины. Давайте сделаем это сразу с новым роком. Wow. Я никакая не игрушка в руках Коломойской. Не был бы игрушкой, честно говоря, не в руках ни одного из этих людей. If you're a, a man of principles, yes. Why are you working for a man who the anti-corruption authorities say has stolen all this money from the people of this country? Все каналы у нас принадлежат олигархам. Все крупные предприятия принадлежат этим группам. Получается, что мы все, люди в Украине, 40 миллионов людей, без принципа, мы все работаем на этих предприятиях. Или теперь весь юмор будет про меня? Да? Про вас. I guess that was a little older just before he got elected. It's interesting. It's over on uh, Red Pill World on BitChute. This says Alexa knows World War III. Russia will start real war with Germany. Let's see here. This is how it's titled. Let's see what happens. World War III starts on November 23rd, 2023 at 6.05 p.m. when Russia launches an attack against Germany. World War III starts on November 23rd, 2023 at 6.05 p.m. when Russia launches an attack against Germany. World War III starts on November 23rd, 2023 at 6.05 p.m. when Russia launches an attack against Germany. One world government will immediately panic. 
real and holographic. The world will stand witness. A global event. In the year 2024, a global event will alter the course of mankind's future. The world will stand witness to a massive alien invasion. Thousands of projected holographic alien warships will blanket the skies, sending people into a global panic. Real military crafts within the holograms will inflict actual damage to the surrounding areas to sell the gimmick. And as a result of the ensuing human chaos, a one world government will immediately form without any resistance from the people. They will be the new world order. Once this happens, we as a people will be doomed to enslavement and accelerated depopulation. Thanks for the heads up. Quarantine camp. COVID quarantine camp, Washington State. Camps are a reality in Washington State. I'm here at Camp Solomon Schechter, normally a Jewish summer camp, but Washington State Department of Health has contracted it out to house people who are in isolation and quarantine because they are ill or have had close contact. The code is now also on the books in Washington State, allowing local health officials to isolate or quarantine someone against their will. Washington Administrative Code, uh, Chronicle newspaper, a man who was flying to Alaska, had a layover in Washington at the Washington airport. Someone decided that he either had the illness or close contact. They throw him in quarantine camp when he's just trying to get to Alaska. This man escapes quarantine camp, flees running across several lanes of interstate. Uh, that was the biggest incident surrounding this. Most people have been uh, pretty okay with quarantine camp, but the infrastructure is in place now in Washington state to pull a Nazi move if they want to. Health officials tell me they have only contracted this through March as they d prepare to wind down their, uh, you know, tyrannical moves. Watch my YouTube for more. All right. Thanks for the report. It is well known nowadays that what happens on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube has great influence on events as they occur on the ground. The Internet, too, is a battleground. It is thus comforting to learn that the IDF employs soldiers whose job titles are new to the military world. The IDF now has soldiers who tweet, share, like, and more. I just wrote a tweet about how many uh, suspected uh, terrorists were arrested in the West Bank last night. Um, about every day we update the Twitter first thing in the morning, how many were arrested, and I just wrote a tweet about it. What kind of a commentary do you get through that kind of tweet? For the most part, we get retweets, uh, which are basically when the user takes what we tweeted out and they make it their status on Twitter. Um, and then most of the comments we get are very polarizing. We get very positive comments like, Good job, and then we get very negative comments. We meet the soldiers of the IDF spokesman's unit, New Media Desk, on another routine day in which they surf the web's blogs and social worlds. The reader's response or talkbacks are also an opening for much anti Israel and anti Semitic content. The IDF blocked the option of talkbacks to videos on its YouTube channel. However, it promises that on other channels, which include a Facebook page that is about to be launched, serious and respectable comments will be allowed and the IDF will answer them. Uh, we had uh, comments open on our YouTube channel, and that did not work out particularly well. Huh. People were writing really horrific comments um, mm -hmm. that were just incredibly inappropriate. And because it's our channel, our platform, we are ultimately responsible for everything that gets written up there, which is why we had to close comments. Yeah, that's right. People were calling you out. I think we could be also attacking a lot of the uh, government. So it's hard to listen to this uh, cackling hen, but Hillary Clinton calls for a cyber war against Russia. So I just wanted to share that because I remember I just showed you guys that clip from Anonymous talking about what? A cyber war against Russia. So Anonymous and uh, and the Hill Dog, right? They, like, they call it the Hill Dog. Yeah. Same page. All right, same page. Um, another really good one. Check out what is cultural Marxism. This is on Viceroy, over on Bitshoot. Just wanted to share. 
should check this out sometime. What is cultural Marxism? Because we're seeing it in action in uh, our country. So it's good to know. Good to know. And amid all this, Sean Penn, the actor, is in Ukraine chatting with chatting with him the best use of the president's time. So I guess this is him actually chatting with the president here. Another CIA asset. This guy's been involved in some very shady situations himself. Well, there he is, just, I guess, talking. We don't get to hear anything, but okay. It's like Dennis Rodman and uh, North Korea. Mind Control Made Easy or How to Become a Cult Leader. This is on YouTube on Billy Liberty channel. Uh, you should check this one out, too. It's uh, very strange. It's an old, old clip. This is a old school. It says from 1999. Yeah, this is uh, back when YouTube was still like, totally the Wild West. You'd find a lot of strange stuff like this. Uh, but this is good. It's a lot of great information on uh, cults and programming. So check that out. New National Potion Pass quietly being implemented. That'll be more, uh, more news on that on Monday. Department of Homeland Security seeks to divert officers from the U.S. border to Ukraine. Makes sense, right? Uh, they already screwed our border uh, officers over. So, yeah, why not just go ahead and completely pull them with the excuse that we need them in Ukraine? We need the border officers in Ukraine. Makes a lot of sense, right? We have a military for that, don't we? In reserves. Woke culture. Clovid drive enrollment increases at, co at conservative religious colleges. Of course, we're just seeing that people breaking from the beast, the school beast. Middle school paper publishes protest tips for aspiring BLM demonstrators. White kids are admonished to resist speaking because this is not for you. Some more of that division based on race. And we got some Mavi... 777 here. Let's see what we got. Ven como tres bolitas, güey. Mira. Ven. Ven a ver cómo se ven como tres bolitas en el teléfono. Ah, sí. Neta, ve, es que era ve, ven Dani. ¿Las viste? Son como tres bolitas, papi. What do you think? Creo que son tres bolitas. Mira, mira, papi, ya viste? Checa, que te va a atravesar allá. Estás en los otros. Sí. Checa, eh. No te tienen que ser. That was it. That was kind of cool. Kind of flying humanoid ish. Another one from Mavi777, UFO Alarm. That's pictures, but we've seen a lot of this too, a lot of video footage of uh, strange colors in the skies. Purple is a popular one, but we've seen them all. There's a green. There we go, pink. Wild. Yeah, I think that was it. That's all I wanted to show you on that one. Welcome back. This is from Disclosed Screen Grim Refar. those strange black uh, smoke rings man I did a video on those way back in 2012 I've done others since they were first reported 
I think it was 1947 over a military base. Like several military people reported these things. And they almost look uh, like those creatures or those entities or those uh, spirits, those uh, black things that I showed you earlier that are being filmed from airplanes that have a mist, like a misty tail. And these always have kind of a mist. I've done side-by-side comp uh, -side comparisons in past videos showing the smoke rings that come from machinery compared to these things, and you can tell the difference. The ones who come from a machinery or whatever, they, they don't last long. They'll go up and then quickly dissipate, and you can actually see them you know, moving up and then settling and then just kind of falling apart. But there's videos of these things where they're floating up there for 10, 15 minutes, and then they slowly fall apart. Just disappear. There you go. And the last one, also from disclosed screen, disclosed screen Grim Reefar, Russian fighter jet filmed attacking civilian village just outside Ukraine capital. <laughs> Wow, it's crazy. All right, that's a good one. Disclosed screen, Grim Reefar. That's, I mean, it's not a good one. It's not a happy thing. Definitely be praying for the people out there right now because it's just chaos, it seems. But that actually concludes the show. So let me jump over here real quick, throw a little, little background up, something nice. There you go, that's nice. Jump over here to the chat yeah. real, real quick and uh, say hello. Hey, guys, thank you all for being here, man. Thank you. The chat's going pretty quick. Usually all there's Caleb, Mark, YouTube community admin, really real, Gina, Liz C, Shibu or Sheba, Vivian. How you guys doing? Gray Wolf, good to see everybody, man. Thank you for being here. Nelson, Lord Malthus. What's up, everybody? Tamara, I hope you did okay here, man. Looks like you're on your own. Thanks, as always, too. But thank all you guys, man. Thanks for being here. Uh, I appreciate it. Look, I'm looking at the time. I never know the time until the show's done. Um, and it's 610. So, wow, we did uh, four, over four hours. Four hours. Lots of info, as you can see. Definitely be praying for the people in Ukraine. And whew, we'll be keeping our eyes on it. We'll see what happens over this next week. You know, we'll have, uh, have more information next week. I've got my uncensored show on Monday, which is on Rumble. You can find a link to my Rumble uh, page below. Or uh, just check my website tomorrow, and I'll have a link to the show. But ultimately, it's on Rumble. <laughs> so every Monday at 2 p.m. Central Standard, 2 in the afternoon. Please come check it out. Check out the live. A lot of great information there, and it's all about the potion. It's about the subjects that we're not allowed to speak of on some of these social media. But uh, thanks again, man. I thank you guys uh, for being here. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll be back Monday. I also have a really big video on 5G, which will be uh, up this week. I'm almost done with it. I uh, also want to thank my uh, supporters, always my Patreon, PayPal supporters, also those of you who subscribe to the scariest movie ever. TV. Thank you all so very much, man. I appreciate it. You just don't know. I really appreciate it. I pray for you guys too, man. I thank you. And uh, that's about it, man. I always like to end these with a, a bit of a prayer. So, Heavenly Father, thanks for all these great people, first off. Uh, thanks for the fact we can still meet up in this sense and go over all this information and kind of be together in this way. So thank you for that, Lord. And really means a lot now. Uh, there's a lot of sad people out there, a lot of lonely people, a lot of people scared out there, Father. So I just pray you lift them all up and definitely be with the people in Ukraine and there's people all around the world. Uh, we see all these things popping off right now and we understand what time it is and what that means. And we know we're not supposed to have fear, you know, so for those who do, Father, I just pray you lift them up, comfort them, you know, in these times and and thank you for that. I love you, Lord. And uh, on that note, and in Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you. Okay, Lord. I was going to say, okay. Okay, Lord. Uh, okay, guys. Thank you. 
thank you guys, man, once again for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, like I said, you guys have a wonderful weekend. I'll be back on Monday on Rumble, 2 o'clock in the afternoon with another live show. And then I got my 5C video coming up this week. I'm over here in the chat. I'm seeing Quantum, Caleb, Myth, Nelson, Free Will, Richard T., Lady of the Woods, Chickadee, Chris Clever, I Am Warrior, Noir Nocturne, Kang, what's up, Kang of Kong, Mickey Ray, Chili Peen. All right, guys, I'll stop there. Thanks again, Tamara, too. I appreciate you. All right, guys, hey, I'll see you on Monday. Really, if you haven't been there for a live, come on over to the Rumble Show on Monday. <coughs> Excuse me. For the longest, I was doing that show on Odyssey, and it was real glitchy. It's not that way on, on a Rumble. It's smooth, and uh, it's just it's good. It's running good. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys Monday. Have a good weekend.